Alatra TV presents The report Primordial Alatra Physics was prepared by the international research group Alatra Science of Alatra International Public Movement under the editorship of Anastasia Nov. The report contains information on the origin and structure of elementary particles, basic building blocks which make up matter, interrelation of elementary particles and cosmology in relation to unified field theory, electromagnetic and gravitational interactions, alternative energy sources, etc. It shows importance, scale and timeliness of the latest knowledge in the field of fundamental and applied physics. It gives answers and relevant explanations for the main and solved questions of contemporary physics. The report, Primordial Alatra Physics. Good afternoon, dear friends. We received a very interesting letter in our channel's mail. Thanks to this letter, the creative team of Alatra TV decided to film the whole video about the report Primordial Alatra Physics. This report was published in 2015 and is available in open access. Each interested person can find it on the website alatra-science.org. And now we bring to your attention the video version of this report. Therefore, if you are interested in going beyond the quantum limit with your understanding, please make yourself comfortable. We will start. Introduction The primordial Alatra physics contains basic information about the elementary principles of physics of fundamental particles, as well as regularities of their interaction. This is really an evolutionary breakthrough for the world science, since this knowledge affects fundamental research in various areas of science, from microphysics to cosmology, from neutrino physics, as well as astrophysics of elementary particles. What are the fundamental particles? What do elementary particles consist of? How to control them? Where does the visible matter appear from and where does it disappear? What are the laws of gravitational interaction based on? What does dark matter consist of? How to create a living and a non-living object? How to ensure self-sustainable living in extreme climatic conditions on Earth and in space? The answers to all of these and many other questions are given in the primordial Alatra physics. Thanks to the knowledge in the report, it is possible to make any calculations of nuclear and chemical reactions under any conditions and absolutely accurately. What does it mean? A simple example. Under normal conditions, distilled water behaves as a dielectric, substance which practically does not conduct electric current. However, during a solar eclipse, it behaves as an electrolyte, substance which conducts electric current. Conditions changed, and we get a new result. After studying the calculation tables, indicating inaccuracies, note see further in the report. One may understand how many elementary errors are made in science during such observations, what the errors of results of expensive experimental research works are, and how easy it is to eliminate them when one knows the fundamentals of the primordial electrophysics. Why do we need to build a large hadron collider if any pupil who knows fundamentals of the primordial electrophysics can make absolutely accurate calculations of interaction between elementary particles on his tablet, and under any conditions at that. Thanks to this report, it is possible to make an evolutionary leap in science, as physics is the basis of all natural sciences. The knowledge of the primordial electrophysics 
allows to make discoveries in many fields of science and to accomplish grandiose breakthrough in quantum physics, biophysics, chemical physics, geophysics, astrophysics, and so on. Research works in these scientific areas, based on the knowledge of the primordial electrophysics, have already brought tremendous results, including those in the sphere of starting of new technologies for production and obtaining inexhaustible energy. The knowledge of primordial electrophysics gives access to an inexhaustible source of energy, which is everywhere, including outer space. It is renewable energy. As a result, elementary particles are created, move and interact. The ability to get it and to transfer it from one state to another gives us a source of alternative energy, new, safe and available to each person. Since this energy is everywhere, it can become available to each person under any conditions here and now, both on Earth and in space. Very interesting information. And how will this knowledge affect our lives? Certainly, it will qualitatively change the life of human civilization in general. For humanity, it opens up a possibility of forming an absolute new way of life, in which such things as need and hunger will disappear. People will not need to work hard to make a living. The use of the inexhaustible source of energy will lead not only to the reduction of emissions of harmful gases in the atmosphere. Hazardous biological, chemical and nuclear waste can be easily utilized absolutely without any harm to the environment. Nuclear power plants will disappear as unnecessary. Oil, gas and other known power sources will lose their relevance due to high label intensity of production, storage, exhaustibility of these resources and their environmental hazard. It will give a chance to preserve the environment, to restore and increase the wealth of flora and fauna. Primordial Alatra Physics. Everything in this world is made up of elementary particles. And when we know what elementary particles consist of and how to control it, when we know their combinations and laws of interaction, we can create any living and non-living object copy and clone it, including phenotypically and genetically identical organisms. In other words, to reproduce it in quality and quantity many times as needed. It is possible to get from elementary particles the same tasty, healthy, real freshly baked bread with any required characteristics in any quantity. It is not necessary to grow and then kill an animal in order to get any kind of a meat dish. Already, now, thanks to the knowledge of the primordial Alatra physics, scientific research is being conducted in many directions, including the field of the latest biotechnologies, medicine and its equipment. Medicine can become an exact science. It will have a clear understanding of the processes happening in living organisms, not only at the level of molecular and genetic processes, but also at the level of interrelation of elementary particles. Already, now, developments of scientists of Alatra International Public Movement indicate that prolongation of human life beyond the limit of the species is an absolute reality as of today. Under such conditions, a qualitatively new transformation of our civilization 
into the direction of spiritual self-development, as well as extensive scientific cognition of the surrounding world and oneself is possible. But, as we know, harm or benefit of any landmark discovery depends first of all on the domination of one or another worldview of the majority of people, egoistic consumer or spiritual and creative vector of thinking. Dear viewers, everything depends on our choice. In connection with the inevitable cyclical changes in nature, special attention is paid to the issues of starting and formation of the climate on Earth. The primordial electrophysics, at its full, accelerated development, will allow people to solve, in a short time, a number of strategic, vitally important problems for humanity, not only in the field of innovative power, life support, but also in the field of climate geoengineering. A number of successful research works have been already conducted. They allow to monitor climate to determine taking into account a multi-factor analysis, the course of further developments related to climate change, to find compensatory mechanisms of nature, and to start the necessary local or general adaptive actions directed at changing climatic conditions. For more details, see the report on the problems and consequences of global climate change on Earth, effective ways to solve these problems, which is available at the official website of Alatra International Public Movement. In the future, the primordial Alatra physics is capable of solving the global problem of providing humanity not only with oxygen and other necessary chemical elements, but also with food, clean water, regardless of global climatic changes on Earth or another planet. Today, humanity has a real chance to survive in the conditions of global climatic changes on the planet, which unfortunately are inevitable in the next decades. It is known that absolutely all modern technologies are based on fundamental scientific research in the field of physics. Scientists note that over the last 50 years there have been no major discoveries in the world in the field of natural sciences. The main reason lies in the intensive development of consumer society. Undoubtedly, this situation affects such important for humanity field of science as space exploration as well. Today, the leading space countries, which until recently were pioneers of space, cannot even achieve such a great success that they made half a century ago. Nowadays, the study of space, in most cases, is limited to unmanned flights in near space. And the majority of piloted flights are still made within the thermosphere at the heights of no more than 400 kilometers from the Earth's surface that is, in the space of low Earth orbit. Because science has not yet found the means of protection against space radiation. And the problems of cosmonautics remain largely unsolved. The primordial Alatra physics is capable of solving not just these problems. It is the knowledge that leads to evolutionary space breakthroughs it's a huge potential to create new research and scientific directions. That which seemed to be unrealizable for centuries, and yesterday was only a daring dream, today becomes a real challenge, and tomorrow an accomplishment. Sergei Korolov The primordial electrophysics gives a deeper understanding of the origin and evolution of the universe. It opens new milestones in the field of cosmology, quantum physics, space biology, gravitational biology, 
and biotechnology, planetary science, physics of the helisphere and the near-Earth space environment, physics of space rays, extra atmospheric astrophysics. This knowledge allows humanity to overcome ionizing radiation, UV radiation, problems connected with vacuum and overcoming meteoric danger, change of magnetic field. It opens opportunities for existence of humanity and other planets in other gravitational conditions and so on. It is not a fantastic perspective of the far future. This is the real tomorrow and in many ways is already here. As they say, when you have universal keys, the knowledge of fundamentals of elementary particles in your hands, you can open any door in the micro and macrocosm. Primordial Alatra Physics History Intensive development of the primordial electrophysics began in 1996. The first familiarization with this knowledge gave an understanding of the paramount importance of this knowledge for humanity. However, it is not a secret that this knowledge is at the same time very dangerous due to the fact that in the consumer society all advanced technologies can be used for purposes which are far from being peaceful. Therefore, for a long time, this information was not made public. But scientific work on the basis of this knowledge did not stop. With time it became clear that it is necessary to create such conditions under which progressive world scientists, who specialize not only in the field of physics, but also in the adjacent scientific directions, can unite. The world community received access to some basic concepts thanks to the series of books by Anastasia Novich, Alatra and Isosmos. Many basic understandings of difficult physical processes were given in these books in an allegorical form, convenient for understanding by a wide range of people. The knowledge given in these books attracted the attention of the active part of intellectual community. They drew attention of many smart people who are living by their conscience and are interested in promoting development of the society exclusively in spiritual and moral ways. All this turned into a mass popular movement at the international level, Alatra International Public Movement. This greatly increased the opportunities to warn the international community about the impending threats and risks, allowed to attract and involve decent talented scientists in the development of new perspective directions in science on the basis of the primordial Alatra physics. These are people of honor and conscience who came to science not for the sake of money and glory, but for the sake of developing science for the benefit of society, for the sake of high humanitarian purposes. It is that spiritual and intellectual foundation of independent world science, which allows under present conditions to quickly and efficiently solve many global problems, challenges, threats and risks of the present time, including those which concern the entire planet. About the report. The results of scientific research in many directions on the basis of the knowledge of the primordial electrophysics gave an actual understanding of nature, of origin, of such physical phenomena as time, space, mass, gravitation, electricity, magnetic field, light, and many others. Today, considering the available extensive base of information, experience of application of the primordial electrophysics in different scientific areas, including the field of geophysics, in particular in the developments concerning new methods of research in seismology, volcanology and climatic geoengineering, there was an urgent need to declare more openly some information based on the knowledge of the primordial electrophysics. This forced announcement is connected with the dangerous level of an emergency situation caused by the planet Earth entering the cycle of irreversible climatic changes. 
and the existing risks and threats for humanity in the nearest decades. And most of all, it is connected with the situation which has been formed in the world society today and with a sound assessment of events in the near future, taking into account the changes introduced by people themselves through the interrelations of society. Despite the extensiveness of explored and already applied technologies, it must be understood that this is only an alphabet of fundamentals of elementary particles, yet it is sufficient for clever people to understand the essence and importance of this issue. And by comparing this information to draw independent conclusions. Primordial Alatra Physics. Historical background. Atoms. The ancient understanding of atom as the foundation of the universe was qualitatively different from the modern understanding, in which atom is only called the smallest part of chemical element. Let's take a closer look at what is said about this in the report Primordial Electrophysics. The doctrine of the great emptiness, discrete, intermittent, structure of matter, indivisible particles, was known to people in different epochs and cultures. In remote antiquity, it was integral and reflected spiritual and material principles of the world and people. The more this knowledge passed through a prism of consumer, egotistical thinking, political and religious fanaticism, the more of its initial essence was lost. In the East, people knew fully well that the world consists of great emptiness and poor grains, which have a spherical form. Such fundamental indivisible particles were called atoms in ancient times. As it is known, the ancient Greek word atomus means literally indivisible, that is, a particle which cannot be divided into smaller parts. In ancient India, there was a word atman or atma, which denotes one and indivisible. The concept of atma was mainly used in the theory explaining the structure of the whole world from macro to micro objects. In Sanskrit, there is also such a concept as anu. In Sanskrit, the word anu, atom, is a title of the supreme creator, Brahma. The word Brahma, translated from Sanskrit, means sacred power which gives effect, which is said to be the smallest atom as well as the unlimited, all-encompassing universe, meaning that everything consists of it. In Hinduism, Brahma is the unknowable principle of the universe, from whose essence everything originates and everything comes back to it, eternal, without beginning and end. Ancient people of Mesopotamia, residents of Sumer and Babylonia, considered Anu the highest supreme god, honoured from the earliest times. Initially, he was connected with the goddess Ki. In the East, India, China, Japan, there is a term Ki, which is still used to denote energy. Ancient Egypt one of the most ancient gods of first creation in Egyptian mythology has the name Atom, Ra Atom. We know from mythology that Atom symbolized initial and eternal unity of all things, that he originated from himself, from primary chaos in the form of a snake. The image of a snake in motion as a rule in ancient times denoted a wave, structure or a spiral the creating hand of Atom is Euset, 
the greatest among those who comes. It is one of the first ancient goddesses mentioned in ancient Egyptian mythology, the foremother of all gods. She was identified with the sacred tree of life and death. In ancient Egyptian art, she was represented as a woman with the elatra sign, a circle and half moon. In India, the smallest parts of the universe were called Paramanu. In Sanskrit, Anu, Paramanu, mean thinnest, smallest, and were used as an understanding of what the minimal building block of the universe is. In various schools of Indian thought, one can still find mentions that each Paramanu contains characteristic qualities of all elements in an unmanifested form which emerge in the process of creation of material compounds, scanty. It was specified in ancient Indian doctrines that unique properties of these particles are their impenetrability and the super thinnest state, thanks to which they are able to go far and wide in the universe. Unchangeable, inconceivable, indivisible particles formed temporary and perceptible objects. The basis of indivisible particles and their connection with each other is carried out by the force of non-material character. We are speaking of real and phantom pole particles, the force of our art, which we will examine later. Echoes of this ancient teaching, which existed in the East, can be found in various Indian literacy books, including such collection as Vaisheshika Sutra, where there is a mention about an extremely small particle which has a spherical form, Parimandalia, and which is a constant unchangeable first cause of things. The carrier of final distinctions, the substratum of constant qualities, the minimum size of substance of elements. According to the ancient teaching, all things consist of nothing, at the limit of division of material things, the elementary part of the universe is an atom. The combination of these smallest particles is matter. After proper familiarization with the report Primordial Electrophysics, all this ancient knowledge becomes quite clear, proved at the level of modern physics. Moreover, an integral understanding of its essence is formed. Precisely this knowledge of the East about Atom was borrowed by the West. Ancient Greek, Roman and other philosophers quite often mistakenly interpreted the knowledge of the East by introducing their own understandings from the mind. As it is known, the ancient doctrine about atoms was popularized in the West by Democrates and his adherents. For many years he traveled around the East and studied world view and sacred knowledge of different nations. He lived in India, Babylon, Persia, which had the thousand-year wealth of experience of spiritual heritage of human civilization, including the concepts about the world structure and humans, about the Earth, about distant stars, the great emptiness and the universe. Democrates had been to the east of Africa, in Ethiopia, lived in Egypt. In this treasury of ancient scientific and spiritual knowledge of ancient Egyptian civilization, he spoke with Egyptian priests, the guardians of secrets of ancient manuscripts. It is not surprising that the worldview of this person reflected his own understanding of echoes of the ancient knowledge obtained during his journey around the East. And if we take into account translation inaccuracies, information which was passed through the prism of traditional thinking and peculiarities of Western culture, it is possible to understand why, with time, this ancient knowledge was even more distorted.
and nevertheless. In this doctrine, atoms were considered as the initial, smallest indivisible, impenetrable, non-vanishing, non-arising, invariable, not comprising of emptiness. Today, for the new generation, Democrates is described as the founder of atomism, the doctrine of discrete structure of matter, and materialistic philosophy, as they say, covering things up by this name, and not going into the details of borrowing ancient knowledge of the East by the West. Consequently, such distorted heritage led future generations into the world of illusions and deceptions that observes external manifestations without the understanding of internal essence of processes which take place. Let's consider some examples of how some philosophers interpreted ancient knowledge. More details about this can be found in the report. In the 16th century, English philosopher, the father of English materialism, and influential politician, Lord Chancellor Francis Bacon, relying on Democrates' ideas, brought even more distortions into the essence of this knowledge. He presented matter as active and indestructible, believing that there are no matter bricks, that its divisibility, in his opinion, has to be infinite. Today, in the history of modern science, it is considered that it was John Dalton, British chemist, physicist, scientist, one of the most famous scientists of the early 19th century who revived atomism and fundamentally introduced into science the concept of atom. In fact, this person, while knowing about the ancient concept of indivisible parts, atoms, to a great extent, distorted the remains of the ancient teaching and the concept of atom as such for future generations. On the one hand, thanks to his works, Dalton pushed science towards development of theoretical chemistry and creation of chemical industry. On the other hand, his definitions of atom, which were later generally accepted by society, distorted the understanding of the essence of fundamental, indivisible particles of matter. When in the 19th century, it became clear that chemical atoms could be divided into smaller elementary particles, it led to the fact that future generations disregarded this primitive knowledge of antiquity and started treating it as philosophy, which has nothing to do with exact sciences. But the point is even not in these scientists. At the end of the 19th century, and at the beginning of the 20th century, the ancient concepts of atom, either, as the concept connected with free energy, were distorted and discredited, cutting off at once the desires of future generations to go deep into the history of this question. It becomes quite obvious why it was done and why now science came to the deadlock on the most important questions of physics of high energies. We will discuss this further later. During this era, there was a whole group of scientists who studied ancient information about the smallest indivisible particles and discreteness of matter, relying on them in their explanations of world picture. They admired them, criticized. But these arguments about their own understanding of this ancient knowledge, one way or another, found reflection in their works. For example, according to corpuscular philosophy of Gassendi, atoms, the base of all things, are created by God and represent infinitely small, subtle, indestructible particles. He believed that even light and warmth consist of atoms. Between them there is an empty space. Atoms influence each other, move and move again, combine into structures, molecules. The Latin word moles means mass, with the diminutive suffix of cooler, the small mass, a particle. A small mass, primary combination of atoms, which acquired new properties. It should be noted that in the Middle Ages, the language of science in the West 
language of theologians, lawyers, physicians, was considered to be Latin. Therefore, all scientific terminology, in fact, was Latinized. Taking into account that the word atom was considered to be of Greek origin, it was withdrawn from usage and replaced by Latin corpusal, meaning part, little body. This term denoted the smallest particle of matter or ether. So in the 17th to 18th centuries, in natural science systems, atomistic, corpuscular theories appeared. And Mihail Lomonosov used such concepts as element, indivisible small particle and corpuscle, molecule as a set of elements, meaning atoms which form one small mass. In his works, we can find the same ancient knowledge that one of the fundamental principles of the universe is rotating movement. And the atoms themselves are spherical, revolving particles. At the end of the 19th, the beginning of the 20th centuries, a whole range of major discoveries were made by scientists who, during their scientific career, still studied works of the past and were familiar with atomistic conception of ancient times. Among them, the discovery of the periodic law of chemical elements, which was made in 1869 by the outstanding Russian scientist, encyclopedist, chemist, physicist, Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev, and the proofs of famous German physicist, theorist, founder of quantum physics, Max Planck that the radiation and absorption of energy have discrete character, and so on. People use these discoveries up to this day. Science represents an internal single whole. Its division into separate areas is caused not so much by the nature of things, but by limited human perception. Max Planck Today, humanity has already reached such a level of science in studying the microcosm that these discoveries, based only on external observation, do not give the understanding of processes occurring within the system which they study. New fundamental discoveries now are extremely lacking in the primordial knowledge of antiquity, which is partially given and analyzed from the perspective of modern physical concepts in this report. Primordial Alatra Physics Coming up next, new epical discoveries in physics, knowledge about the ether, an inexhaustible source of energy, with the help of which people built the pyramids and other megalithic structures, modern science confirms the knowledge of antiquity, obtaining free energy, the irrefutable reality of today, the mystery of dark energy is revealed. About the ether. Many of us have heard about such concepts as ether and the source of free energy. These subjects very much interest the majority of people and especially scientists. The knowledge of the primordial Alatra physics gives answers to these questions, opening access to an inexhaustible source of energy, which is everywhere, including outer space. It is renewable energy, thanks to which elementary particles are created, move and interact. After all, all material objects, and even our bodies, cars, houses, food, clothes, and even this tablet, and everything that surrounds us consists of elementary particles. The ability to get it and to transfer it from one state to another gives us a source of alternative energy, new, safe, and available to each person. And this means that such concepts as indigence, hunger, a need for arduous labor will disappear from our life. There will be more free time, 
and consumer market will just disappear because it is no longer needed. The potential of this never-ending source of energy is huge. It is much bigger and more stable and safer than the potential of the sun or geothermal energy. Moreover, using this source, we no longer need to accumulate excessive energy and transfer it to the consumer for further use. Undoubtedly, this will qualitatively change life of human civilization. Environmental issues connected with the extraction, storage and exhaustibility of natural resources, oil, gas and other renowned sources of energy will be resolved. This energy is everywhere. It can become available to each person, under any conditions here and now, both on Earth and in space. In ancient times, together with the conception of knowledge of fundamental, indivisible particles of matter, atoms, there were also mentions about an inexhaustible source of free energy, which was characterized as omnipresent and pervasive. There is no place in the material world where it would not be one of fundamental principles of the material world. In ancient Indian texts, which have preserved to present time, it is called Akasha. Akasha, a Sanskrit word formed from a kash, literally shining forth, endless shine, illuminated space. Decryption of this term points to the fact that ancient people knew about the properties of the inexhaustible source of energy, which many centuries later were found by Serbian physicist and inventor Nikola Tesla. We will discuss this further later. An indisputable fact at the present moment is that some ancient civilizations were more developed than ours and possessed technologies about which we do not know yet. As you know, everything new is well forgotten old. Many archaeological discoveries and finds which do not fit in with the accepted traditional explanations of life, history and technical achievements of ancient people give evidence to this fact. The primordial knowledge about either gives answers to many questions. For example, how did the ancient Egyptians manage to carry out construction and decorative design inside the pyramids without resorting to the methods of lighting known to modern people? Thanks to what power could people of antiquity influence gravity to move megaliths and build entire cities out of them? For what purpose were such spaceports, for example, the ancient Baalbek Terrace in Lebanon built? Where did the ancestors of the African tribe of Dogan get the exact data on the star Sirius and its system? And what kind of source of energy do we need to safely reach this and other stars in a spaceship? There are many such facts and much evidence for those who are sincerely seeking, are open to cognition and want to know the truth. During the interpretation of the ancient text into European languages, translators explained the meaning of such concept as akasha, as that which lies at the root. Thus, in the context of the Greek language, it already sounded as essence, usia, the primary. And in Latin, the Greek word essence was designated by the concept substance, substantia and was considered as fundamental principle of phenomenon, matter in the terms of unity of all the forms of its motion, all the differences and oppositions arising in this movement. Modern dictionaries contain such definition of the word akasha as spatial substance, from which the beginning of the manifestation, an initial impulse, comes. Ancient mentions have remained that akasha has only one characteristic sign, sound. Note, refer to the book Elatra, page 44. At that, the sound in the understanding of unheard, very subtle vibrations of unmanifested sound, which is also mentioned in ancient texts as the primordial sound, which is the reason for all consecutive manifestations of invisible and visible, thin and rough elements of the universe. Akasha, the carrier of quality of such sound, 
and is described as infinite, omnipresent substance of the universe, which penetrates everything, has no material form, but gives spaces for a variety of things. It is mentioned that all objects in the world have the properties of spatial separation from each other, due to the fact that they are surrounded by akasha and interact with it. The manifestation of akasha is everything that represents a combination of elements that is tangible, audible, visible. At the same time, it is so thin that it is not perceived by human senses. In the translations of ancient Indian teachings, it is said that at the emergence of the world, there was only this substance. When the world cycle is completed, everything will revert into Akasha again, and the next cycle will begin. The extant mentions of Akasha can be found in the literature about the teachings of ancient Indian philosophical schools, such as Vaishishika, Naya, Sankhya, and others. Philosophers who tried to argue about even more ancient knowledge, which remained in their time, for example, in Sankhya, Akasha is treated as causing Akasha, and the cause to Akasha and explanations concerning such transformation are given. This knowledge becomes very intriguing if you know the fundamental principles of the processes that happen in the Azalsmic grid. Ancient Greeks, adopting knowledge from the East, in particular from ancient India, called the inexhaustible source of free energy the ether, from Greek einir, radiant, trying to convey the meaning while translating the Indian term akasha into Greek as never-ending shine, illuminated space. It is interesting that ancient Greek philosophers such as Anaxagoras, Empedocles, Plato and Aristotle called the ether the fifth element, quintessence. Moreover, it was mentioned that the ether had only one type of movement, spatial movement in a circle. Note, for more information about spiral movement, please refer to the book Alatra. Mentions of the ether have also remained in legends about gods. According to ancient Greek mythology, the ether is mentioned as the flaming air, where stars revolve and gods live. Note, see further in the report the section about Isalsmic membrane. In ancient times, the ether people understood something that separates the infinite world of God from the temporary and material world. It was believed that the force that creates and starts up all the visible and invisible in this material world, together with what we call life, seeps through the ether. One of the most influential philosophical schools of antiquity was Stoicism, which later became popular in Rome. It is interesting that Stoics called the subtlest initial matter either as pneuma, which makes up everything and which acts on everything. Pneuma was considered to be the thinnest substance which permeates space with life breath and unites it in one complete organism. The pneumatic system, according to their doctrine, has its control center, the managing part, which is in the ether. Note, see further in the report the section about real stationary Po particles. It is interesting that pneuma, originally translated from Greek, means breath, that is, an initial impulse. Note, see further in the report, the section about the initial impulse, the process of Isalsmos. In this regard, the word pneuma was translated as burning of the ether, that is, the energy of the ether. If we take into account the fundamentals of primordial Alatra physics, then this information, which has survived to the present day, does not seem like legends anymore. This knowledge gives a clear, well-grounded understanding of the fact that these are natural processes which lie at the foundation of the universe. And such concepts as Akasha, Ether and Pneuma, these are all epithets which are used to describe the source of free and inexhaustible energy. When there is a sincere craving for recognizing the essence, then the answers to all questions appear.
The knowledge about the ether as the global all-pervasive environment, which has the role of carrier of any interactions in the material world, was preserved in the subsequent epochs too. Many scientists were interested in this subject, however they perceived this information according to the dominant worldview of their era. They are Giordano Bruno, René Descartes, Christian Huygens, Isaac Newton, Leonard Euler, Mikhail Lomonosov, Dmitry Mendeleev and many others. For example, René Descartes, physicist, mathematician, puts forth that the ether is the light conductor. Christian Huygens describes the wave theory of light where he states his key idea. Light vibrations are elastic impulses in the ether. Isaac Newton also mentioned this knowledge, which was known in ancient times. In particular, about the instant transfer of action from one body to another at a distance through empty space without the help of matter. Newton put forward this information as his own idea of long-range action or action at a distance. The greatest mathematician, engineer, the physicist of the 18th century, who made a fundamental contribution to the development of these sciences, academician Leonard Euler, wrote in his works that all optical, electrical, magnetic and other phenomena are explained by the interaction of rough matter and a subtler substance, less dense but more elastic, the ether. English physicist and mathematician James Maxwell believed that electric field intensity is connected with elastic tension in the ether and the magnetic induction is connected with its whirling movement. He wrote the following. In fact, whenever energy is transmitted from one body to another in time, there must be a medium or substance in which the energy exists after it leaves one body and before it reaches the other. In the century of new discoveries in physics, this all-pervading environment was considered to be the fundamental principle, as well as in ancient times. But in the light of new understandings of the time, either was considered to be also the carrier of light and electromagnetic interactions. It was believed that it is namely either that enables the transmission of electromagnetic radiation, thanks to which there was a popular expression about broadcasting to go on the air. The concept of the ether was studied by the following scientists. English physicist and chemist Michael Faraday, the founder of modern concept of force field in electrodynamics, the author of a number of fundamental discoveries, including the law of electromagnetic induction and laws of electrolysis, etc. Generally, it should be noted that electrodynamics is of great importance to technology and underlies radio engineering, electrical engineering, various communication industries and radio. German physicist Heinrich Hertz is one of the founders of electrodynamics who experimentally proved the existence of electromagnetic waves. Dutch physicist Hendrik Lorentz, whose works are devoted to electrodynamics, statistical physics, optics, theory of radiation and nuclear physics combine the concept of a continuous electromagnetic field with the notion of discrete electric charges, which are part of a substance. Jules Henri Poincaré used the concept of the world ether in his works and specified that it, the ether, can never be found experimentally, as it was mentioned in ancient times. However, in ancient times, it was also noted that this substance is inaccessible to people, but knowing its nature, it is possible to obtain an inexhaustible source of power or energy. To summarize, we can say that the scientists of their time, the end of the 19th, the beginning of the 20th centuries, came to an understanding that there is a unified and visible field, which has a huge, never-ending energy reserve, which can be easily obtained. The information in this field is transmitted immediately and interactions in the material world occur, but it cannot be experimentally discovered. However, by knowing its nature, it is possible to use this inexhaustible source of energy. These discoveries and the interest in the subject of obtaining free energy from either have led to a great surge in science. The fact is that the science at that time came really close to the important, crucial point of development opening fantastic perspectives for human civilization. All these fundamental discoveries gathered a serious pace of experimental evidence, but only until a certain moment. Our world is immersed in a vast ocean of energy, we fly in the infinite space with incredible speed. Everything revolves around, moves, everything is energy. 
we have a daunting task to find ways to extract this energy. Then, getting it from this inexhaustible source, humanity will progress at a great speed. From the Diaries of Nikola Tesla, 1891. The concepts of ether and free energy are linked to the famous Serbian physicist, researcher of electricity of high voltage, talented engineer and inventor Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla experimentally found a way to produce inexhaustible energy from ether. The main field of his scientific interest was research of generation and remote wireless transmission of energy. It is not incidental that his ideas included at first sight fantastic realities for humanity. When speaking about these great scientists, the words from the Book Alatra are recalled. For instance, in ancient Egypt, this knowledge was inscribed on golden tablets as a heritage for descendants. Later on, people called such heritage the Books of Thoth, though the tablets were eventually destroyed, or more exactly melted because most people have always valued gold more than knowledge. Nevertheless, copies of the tablets, inscribed on papyrus sheets, or at least a part of them, have been preserved. Unfortunately, such copies were vehemently destroyed by priests at different times, no matter where they were found, for the information contained in them literally undermined the power of priests over people. Nevertheless, something remained. And this something, having been saved and rehidden in the Croatian mountains, gave the world two eminent scientists in the second half of the 19th century. But when that something fell into the wrong hands in 1936, it caused irreversible consequences, the beginning of which was later witnessed by peaceful inhabitants of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After seeking the information, it becomes clear that Nikola Tesla and Roberto Vattini were these scientists. Tesla was a genius in electricity, and Bartini a genius in aviation. His fundamentally new developments in aviation were ahead by several decades in comparison with the contemporaries. Some of them were only recently adopted in aircraft industry. The main thing that united these scientists, as reported by historians, was the fact that they possessed high moral qualities, humanness and strong work ethic. It is not surprising that such knowledge was given to people possessing such qualities. As it is said, many secrets of visible and invisible worlds are disclosed to a human with a kind heart and good thoughts. Tesla achieved tremendous results in his research. He dreamed that his inventions and free energy would be available to all people which naturally would considerably facilitate and simplify life for all the humanity and would bring the civilization to a new round of technical development. The period of 1895 to 1904 is called time of revolutionary changes in physics. From 1892 to 1905, there was a peak of the most significant discoveries of Tesla. Tesla achieved tremendous results in his research and dreamt that his inventions and free energy would be available to all people. It was the era of great discoveries in physics. As contemporaries of that time wrote, ideas literally soared in the air. All these fundamental discoveries gathered a serious pace of experimental evidence till a certain moment. Unexpectedly, at the beginning of the 20th century, all research works on ether were stopped. Many scientists who defended the theory of ether were left without funding of their works. Various artificial obstacles were created.
the world mass media began a large-scale campaign to discredit ether as one of the basic concepts of theoretical physics. Why did everybody suddenly become silent? Nikola Tesla unwittingly stopped the study of the question of obtaining free energy from either for a century. The problem was that financing of his ideas and research were carried out at the expense of American industrialists. They were the first ones to whom he showed his most important discoveries. Because of fear of losing their income and power over people, they not only suddenly stopped the financing of Tesla's projects, but also did everything they could so that such a concept as either, once and for all, disappeared from fundamental science, physics. How was the work aimed at the purposeful destruction of the knowledge about the ether conducted since 1905? What role was played by Einstein and his theory of relativity? How was the manipulative technology of Overton Window used to change the public opinion? What is really hiding behind the artificially created energy crisis? What happened in 1920 at the 86th Congress of the Union of German Naturalists and Physicians in Germany? More details on the answers to these questions can be found in the Primordial Alatra Physics Report. What can we see in the modern world as a result of the loss of ancient knowledge of the inexhaustible source of energy? Either Kasha, fierce competition for non-renewable energy sources of the planet, military conflicts, expansion of transnational companies, irreconcilable division of people into us and them, and fights without rules for the consumer market. And all this is happening right now, at the time when global natural cataclysms have accelerated their pace, gaining strength, and when knowledge of either is as necessary of survival of humanity as air. With the help of money you can hold scientists' tongues, but it is impossible to hold the rising anger of nature. However, now, thanks also to the knowledge of the primordial Alatra physics, all sensible people of the world have a unique opportunity to change radically a vector of development of our civilization to the spiritual and moral cause, and to solve the most important problem of the world society, the problem of obtaining free energy at no cost. Opportunities and prospects which are offered by the primordial Alatra physics free people from material dependence, that is, promote abolition of any consumer system. They bring humanity to an absolutely new side of perception, worldview, scientific studying and practical research of space and man. Unless society changes, mankind simply will not survive. It is only possible to survive the coming cataclysms if the whole of humanity unites and society transforms in the spiritual sense. From the book, Alatra. Primordial Alatra Physics. Elementary Particles. Since the 19th century, the science of our modern civilization started to use the new view of atom as of the smallest part of chemical element. In 1897, thanks to English physicist Joseph John Thomson, who had established the cathode rays are formed by a stream of the smallest particles, an electron was discovered, a carrier of negative elementary electric charge in atoms. The assumption that inside the electromagnetic field there is a photon was made in 1900 in the works of German physicist theorist, founder of quantum physics, Max Planck. 
In 1905, Albert Einstein, developing Planck's idea, postulated that electromagnetic radiation, or light, is nothing but a stream of separate quants, that is, photons. And the direct experimental evidence of the existence of photon was already obtained by American physicists, by Robert Millikan in 1912 to 1915, and by Arthur Compton in 1922. In 1919, English physicist Ernest Rutherford, as a result of the research in nuclear disintegration, discovered a proton, an elementary particle with a positive charge. In 1930, Swiss physicist Wolfgang Pauli postulated the existence of an elementary particle which almost does not interact with substance. And then in the mid-1950s, American physicists Frederick Reynes and Clyde Cohen experimentally confirmed the existence of a neutral stable particle, neutrino. In 1932, English physicist James Chadwick, during his research on the interaction of alpha particles with beryllium, discovered a neutron, an elementary particle which is part of an atomic nucleus and which mass is close to a proton but has no electric charge. However, in spite of discoveries of an enormous number of the most diverse particles, the questions of describing the inner composition of atomic nucleus in modern science still remain unanswered. Since 1930 and almost to the beginning of the 1950s, the research of elementary particles was closely connected with the research of space rays. Starting in 1950s and until today, the main tool in physics for the research of elementary particles became accelerators, and the object of study – new elementary particles, which appear during collision of accelerated protons and electrons with substance. An enormous number of the most diverse particles was discovered since that time, and the diversity of their characteristics was quite unexpected for the scientists. They had to add such characteristics as strangeness, charm, and so on. It became clear that the world of elementary particles in its laws, properties, behavior is much different from the notions of classical physics. Today, an important discovery in the field of study of elementary particles is considered to be one of the results received with the help of Large Hadron Collider. Scientists have discovered a particle presumably similar to the Higgs boson. Actually, what scientists have found is not the Higgs boson. But these people, without realizing that yet, made a really important discovery and found much more. They experimentally discovered the phenomenon, which is described in detail in the book Alatra. Nowadays, physicists only complicate conditions of external observation, but so far they have no opportunity to observe subtle processes and understand regularities occurring within the system of the microcosm. For a consumer society, such riding around the bush is a natural process. After all, scientists are compelled to survive in literal sense in such egoistical community, applying their talent not for advantage of humanity, but for satisfaction of someone's ambitions, studying physics only in a limited framework of allowed conceptions. Therefore, modern high-energy physics in consumer society can be figuratively compared to an impressive installation for ignorant viewer, its financier, which, in fact, splits up big stones into pieces, which are called elementary particles. But splitting up such a conglomerate, it is impossible to understand the essence of creation of sand grains. Today, many physicists try to come back again to the initial moment experimentally, to the direct way which their predecessors left, they understand that because of climatic situation on Earth, connected with the global natural changes, for the survival of human civilization we need a qualitatively new fundamental breakthrough in physics, especially methods of producing free energy, regardless of external conditions and existence of natural resources. Having the universal keys, the primordial knowledge, 
It is possible not only to open widely the door to the invisible world, but also to enter it, to get in touch with its source. In order to understand the laws of interaction of the microcosm, we need a radical revision of many traditional concepts and views, a qualitatively new view at physics. The primordial Alatra physics not only opens up prospects of an absolutely different vision of physical phenomena in the microcosm, but also gives its fundamental basis and laws of interaction. Primordial Alatra Physics Human Perception In the nature there is a continuous process of movement and transformation of matter at different levels of its organization, at different speed, with different space states, physical and other conditions, and so on. Science has proved that even if the human eye cannot see these transformations, it does not mean that these processes do not exist. However, every change in nature should have a sufficient ground. The fundamental task of modern physics is to find the first cause, which operates according to the unchangeable law, and determines all the diversity of consequent causes that change phenomena and cause of events. Nowadays, as well as in the antiquity age, physics is inextricably connected with philosophy. But in more ancient times it was connected with the spiritual knowledge. More precisely, physics existed as a supplement to it, giving answers to questions relating to life of the micro and microcosm invisible to a human being. The fundamentals of the primordial physics served as a supplement to man's understanding of the true spiritual meaning of his transitory existence in this illusory world. Have you ever thought why spiritual views of the world and the true human nature have been removed and replaced with philosophical materialistic views in the modern society? And why such questions as the birth and evolution of the universe, the origin of time and space, elementary particles, the microcosm, the origin and evolution of life are still studied theoretically at the level of existing scientific knowledge and hypotheses? After all, the same issues were raised as well in ancient spiritual texts of nations of the world, but as a supplement to the knowledge about man, the meaning of his existence and the significance of his spiritual transformation. Here we set aside the question of how and who gave this unique knowledge of the invisible micro and macrocosm to people in high antiquity. It is interesting that a human, as a biological creature, as a resident of the three-dimensional world, is substantially limited in his perception and consequently cognition of the surrounding reality. In other words, if somebody does not tell him about some phenomena which exist outside the visible world and does not teach him to use them, then it will be impossible for him to do that himself. An example of this are the so-called feral people, who, for one reason or another, were socially isolated since their early childhood and had no opportunity to acquire knowledge and social experience. Psychologists and sociologists knew about such examples long ago. And now, let's consider in greater detail the question of illusion and reality of our habitual three-dimensional world. What makes up man's view of the world, of himself, his life? What does he call reality? And what is the real world? If we consider these questions from the point of view of physics, it is obvious that man possesses a highly limited perception of the surrounding world, of this broad ocean of physical fields, the spectrum of electromagnetic waves of different frequency, all this diversity and variety of life forms and natural phenomena.
As an observer, he is locked in the system of the three-dimensional world and can perceive only its small part with the help of his body, namely his sense organs. For example, the human eye can see the electromagnetic waves in the range from 400 to 760 nanometers. Man sees nothing that is outside this spectrum. The same goes for sound. Our sense organs provide quite poor information about the external world, and as a result we get a false image of not just the spatial arrangement of the external reality, but also of the static nature of many visible objects. Meaning that a distinctive illusion of perception arises for a person. However, in reality there is no material object which could be in a state of absolute rest. Because everything is in movement, both in the micro and macrocosm. It is a well-known fact that the human body is an entire chemical plant that generates and consumes energy and can exist only under a set of certain conditions. For example, certain gravitational field, atmosphere, water, nutrient elements necessary for the survival of the organism, and so on. Biochemical processes in the organism of an average adult involve trillions of tiny living micro-objects, more precisely, living systems, cells, that sustain life of this complex system and constantly interact and adapt to the changing conditions. And all these cells consist of elementary particles, which exist at the level of quantum physics, according to quite different laws, unlike the laws of classical physics. At the core of everything here is energy and information. In other words, the chemistry of the visible world is based on the physics of the invisible world. Human brain, although it is very complex, has considerably limited abilities and can operate only under certain specific conditions. The information about the surrounding reality is perceived by an individual delayed and spatially distorted. It means that man gets not the entire, but disjointed, fragmentary information. The models of perception of the surrounding reality are rather subjective. Man perceives the surrounding reality with the help of consciousness, acquired associations related to the three-dimensional world. In other words, he measures all processes and phenomena by three-dimensionality and searches for his own kind. Therefore, consciousness, tuned to stereotype perception of the world in everyday life, loses sight of many things due to lack of understanding of unknown processes and phenomena. That is why a human perceives many things like doubting Thomas. I will not believe it until I see it with my own eyes. However, there is also this well-known praise by Jesus, blessed are those who have not seen and yet had believed. From the perspective of the primordial electrophysics, this expression is more than fair. It concerns not only people's spiritual life, but also global processes which happen in the microcosm at the level of the Azosmic grid. So then, from the perspective of quantum physics, man lives in the system of illusions. But what prevents man from understanding and realizing the illusory nature of this world? It is just such a negative quality of his consciousness as pride, which is a carrot and a stick of the material mind system. Not only it makes man a slave of his desires, but turns him into a milk cow for the system, a dead man while alive. It is no coincidence that ancient people paid special attention to the fact that everything perceived by man in the visible world is in fact not the reality. And what is most important is that he has an opportunity to develop a different kind of perception, which opens the door to the true reality.
the knowledge about complex processes of functioning of the material world of the universe, adapted for human understanding, has existed since the earliest times. Judging by the ancient treatises, this knowledge was treated as sacred, it was carefully passed down from generation to generation. As we have already said, this knowledge was aimed at a person, so he, while recognizing this world, could understand much more about himself, his true nature, his spiritual meaning of life, and would be able to use this additional knowledge of the invisible processes of the material world for spiritual transformation only. Why was the knowledge of the macro and microcosm given as a supplementary one to the spiritual knowledge in ancient times? The first reason? In order for man to realize the main meaning of his short time life, which is the spiritual transformation. The second reason? In order for man to make his conscious mature choice between the dominance of either material or spiritual values in his life. And in order for man to make his choice adequately, he should be aware of risks, specifics and stereotyped actions of the invisible world of the material intelligence system, in which he, as personality, and his body temporarily exist. Note, for more information, please refer to the book Alatra. You may have noticed that the report contains many historical references, myths, legends and mentions of the knowledge our ancestors possessed. Why is special attention paid to this information in such a field as physics? This is because in ancient times, just like now, knowledge about the invisible processes was explained using associative examples that were understandable to people in terms of their daily life in the world they see. For example, one could explain the knowledge of the universe and the invisible world to people living at the seaside, with the help of analogies of processes which were well known to local population, such as phenomena happening in the ocean, figurative examples connected with water and habits of underwater inhabitants. However, for most people, the most understandable associations were examples from everyday life, connected with the life of community, people's relations. When you possess the primordial knowledge, all these parallels are easy to trace while analyzing the cultures of different nations. Today in quantum physics, scientists successfully use the method of analogy thanks to which they create abstract theories and various models intended to explain the processes of the invisible world, which cannot be perceived by the human eye, with the help of associative comparisons, and in the form understandable to people. Moreover, the broader the set of associations which scientists themselves have, the more understandable are the theories which are being explained for people of modern civilization. Today, thanks to modern scientists who study this issue impartially, rich cultural material from all over the world has been collected. It testifies to the fact that the sacred knowledge, one and the same in its essence, was known to people on different continents in different times. Therefore, today, taking into account the rich cultural spiritual heritage of human civilization and knowing its keys, the fundamentals of the primordial Alatra physics, mankind has a chance not only to understand its primordial past, but also to change its future. As they say, everything new is well forgotten old. Primordial Alatra physics. about the non-material nature. In the ancient teachings of the East, as well as in the earliest historic form of Greek atomism, there was a concept of a non-material nature existing outside space and time. To a large extent, it explained the behavior and characteristics of the material world, 
allowed to understand the laws of interaction of matter and principles of controlling it. Starting from the 19th century, many ancient references about the non-material nature were deliberately removed and fully expurgated from the publicly available knowledge. As a result, the following generations were raised with dominating materialistic outlook determined by egoistic consumer thinking and limited perception of reality. As a consequence, nowadays mankind has a lot of problems, including scientific problems which could have been avoided. For example, in physics, it is the issue of the so-called crisis of elementary particle physics. It means that nowadays, thanks to high energy physics, mankind has faced unusual facts in the microcosm. The variety of appearing and disappearing particles in the microcosm into conversion of mass to energy, but having lost the primordial knowledge of non-material nature, it is now standing at the threshold of misunderstanding of these global processes and comprehending them from the perspective of an observer outside the system. Primordial Alatra Physics Primordial Alatra Physics Definitions So what makes up the basis of the material world unity and determines the diversity of its changes? The keys which were lost since ancient times and reveal the secrets of the true microcosm physics are the concepts of isosmos and isosmic grid. They give the whole picture of the processes which occur in the universe, of discreteness of matter structure, the functions of indivisible and the creation of divisible particles, the understanding of basic principles of their interaction and opportunities of getting free energy from inexhaustible source. Our millennium heard just the echo of that former knowledge of the invisible processes. For example, about Akasha and Ether, which have been made many times more complex because of the simple lack of understanding of the true essence of these processes. What is isosmos and the isosmic grid? French physicist Henri Poincaré made a true statement based on more ancient sources about motionless Ether that it could never be found experimentally. But that doesn't mean that the ether does not exist. It only means that it is inaccessible to perception of man as an observer of a three-dimensional world. In ancient times it was indeed mentioned that these bases of the material world were stationary and inaccessible to people, that this substance cannot be felt by touching, cannot be seen by eyesight, and no one can hear its inaudible sound. But it was also mentioned there that when you know its structure, it is possible to get a great benefit, the unlimited power, and control the invisible phenomena which are inaccessible to the human eye. So then, for a better conditional understanding of the essence of the processes that are at the basis of the underlying causes, let us include some explanations from primordial Alatra physics. It should be noted that these explanations are simplified and adapted for understanding the knowledge by a wide range of interested progressive public. For ease of perception, the report omits many physical, mathematical and technical details and scientific formulations that are understandable only to a narrow circle of scientists in the physical sciences. However, along with explanations of primary foundations and concepts from the primordial Alatra physics, numerous examples of approximate analogies of these concepts and processes used in ancient treatises related to various cultures and peoples of the world are given. Also, specific calculations, explanatory diagrams, infographics, tables and formulas are given which are presented in an accessible form and are intended for physical and mathematical calculations and independent verification of the information provided by a wide range of interested public. Primordial Alatra Physics Is the Osmic Grid The 
The construction of any house begins with a frame. Our universe also has its own spatial frame. It is called an isosmic grid, and we will now tell you about it in more detail. Unique ancient knowledge about the basis of the material world has been known for a very long time. And what seems to us to be a new discovery are in fact forgotten primordial knowledge of ancient times. And there is much proof of this, which we will examine later. So then, as it is known, the existence of the universe and human is a continuous, intensive and very rich information exchange at the micro level. But what lies at the basis of the entire material universe? And what is the isosmic grid? Knowing the fundamentals of the primordial electrophysics, it is possible to find the answers to pressing questions of modern science. At the core of the material universe, there is a specific spatial frame, non-material structure, the isosmic grid. Any resident of the three-dimensional world would perceive this energy structure as a very flattened object, in appearance similar to a flat brick, with a psi height of 172nd of the size of its base. In other words, the isosmic grid has a flat geometry. The ability of the material universe to expand is limited by the size of the isosmic grid. Within the isosmic grid, there are 72 dimensions. For more information about 72 dimensions, please refer to the book Alatra. Everything that is called by modern science the material universe exists only within the first six dimensions, and the other 66, in essence, are controlling superstructures, which restrain the material world within a certain constraining framework, six dimensions. According to the Asian knowledge, 66 dimensions, from the 7th through the 72nd inclusive, also belong to the material world, but they are not material in their essence. Outside the isosmic grid, as it was stated in ancient sacred legends of various nations of the world, there is the spiritual world, a qualitatively different world which has nothing in common with the material world, its laws and problems. The isosmic grid is stable and motionless. It consists of a certain number of identical isosmic cells having a shape of a cube in the three-dimensional space. Although for dimensions about the third one the structure becomes more complex, every isosmic cell consists of, relatively speaking, six walls in the form of isosmic membranes. Inside, in the center of the cube of every isosmic cell, there is a stationary Po particle. Today you can find a lot of references to these Osmic Grid, which have been preserved from ancient times by different nations of the world, living on different continents. Today there are many artifacts from different epochs, indicating that lattices, grids, rhombuses with a dot inside, circles, squares and spirals were widespread elements of design and ornamentation on ritual crockery, clothing, sacred objects, and in the decoration of sacred texts of different nations. And some of them, even in the Paleolithic age. It is wrong to think that they denote sown fields, because these signs appeared long before the origin of agriculture. Unfortunately, the closer we get to our times, the more we see the loss of the knowledge and misunderstanding of its essence, substitution of the sacred metaphorical meanings by earthly meaning. It is known that in the past people left the sacred knowledge important to the following generations. In certain places, as a rule, in rock carvings, including those in the form of certain signs. Cave signs and symbols found on different continents are rather identical because of some specific signs 
that points to the common source of that knowledge. For more information about this, please refer to the book Alatra. Ancient Egyptians believed that a goddess called Nut was the mother of the stars, one who gives birth to gods. Her children were the stars over which she ruled. She was identified with cosmic space. At first, she was depicted as the heavenly cow. Then, as a woman not, as an ocean and even as a doom, roof, as the symbol of something hidden under the visible image, something incomprehensible to man. She fenced the invisible and incomprehensible part of the world from the visible, short time and temporal part, the eternal world, from the temporal and earthly world. Sometimes she was painted on the inside lid of sarcophagus looking at their mummy. Nude can be found in the drawings which were used to decorate the interior of pyramids or sacred texts. These were the images of a woman, the goddess of space, bent in the form of a square, rectangle or dome, stretching across the whole horizon. Her body or clothes, as a rule, had a grid ornament or a rhombus-like picture, sometimes with dots in every square. In ancient Egypt, grid plating and patterns were painted on burial sarcophaguses and stages, which demonstrated beliefs of ancient Egyptians about the invisible world and where a person disappeared to. It is interesting that almost all such grid covers for sarcophaguses were made in blue and green colors and decorated with turquoise beads. That has its meaning, indicating certain sacred knowledge. For more details, please refer to the book Alatra for the significance of blue and green colors in the mythology of peoples of the world. In Chinese philosophy, there is such an ancient concept as Yi Zhu, which means space and time and universe. And in modern world, it is used in the meaning of cosmos. It is interesting that etymologically this word derives from the word denoting two perpendicular bars at the base of a roof. And as we have already said, the ancients conveyed the knowledge about the processes happening in the invisible world with help of associative examples. In the Chinese philosophical Taoism text Zhuangzi, 400 to 300 BC, the concepts Yui and Zhou were connected with the concept of Tao, which is one of the central concepts in Chinese philosophy. It is used in different philosophical schools and characterized as divine emptiness, all-encompassing unity of all, the first cause of origin, the source of everything and the principle of its existence. It is eternal and has no name. It is empty and inexhaustible. It gives birth to many things. It may be passed, but may not be taken. It may be perceived, but may not be seen. It has its root and ground in itself. It has no beginning and no ending. In the treatise Huainan Tzu, there are these references to the Tao, 
Tao is connected with something that has no form. It runs as a source, it is in full swing. It stands between sky and earth and fills all the space. It strains four ropes, it has yin-yang in its mouth. An interesting expression, it has yin-yang in its mouth. For more details, refer to the book Alatra, the information about the intersection of the 72nd and the first dimensions. From Tao, the Qing, well-known Chinese philosophical text of the 6th to 5th centuries BC, the Great is in infinite movement. That what is in infinite movement reaches no limit. As it reaches no limit, it comes back to its origin. Thanks to it, Everything is born and continues its growth. The Tao is hidden from us. The Tao gives birth to one. One gives birth to two. Two give birth to three. And three give birth to all creatures. All creatures Having them yin and yang, they are full of qi and are all in harmony. To follow the shine Tao, to perceive its deepest sense. The sign yin yang symbolizes the creative unity of the opposite forces in the universe. According to ancient Chinese views, Yin means variability, and Yang means inalterability, patience, inviolability. It is explained in the primordial Alatra physics that variability is a characteristic of phantom pore particles, and patience and inviolability of the real stationary pore particles. The symbols of weaving and spinning had sacred meaning for many nations. Much ancient knowledge has been preserved to the present day. For instance, there is an Arabic word nul, which means an ancient hand knitting loom, a plain rectangular framework with two strained threads forming a lattice. What is the associative connection of this symbol with the ancient cosmological conceptions? Namely, a hand knitting loom was used as an example to explain the tool of creating the universe, which was operated by the creative god who knitted threads, intertwined a pattern sign from them into the cloth of the world, thus determining the life and destiny of everything, including every man, and the spinning processes the process of linear folding and spiral twisting of different fibers with the help of a spindle in order to create one solid yarn were used to explain the process of creation of all the things and life in the universe. Spiral rotation of spindle symbolized the movement of the universe. A curtain through which the world is seen as an illusion. The word spindle is related to the ancient Indian word vatanam, which means spinning, rolling, moving backwards and frontwards. The spinning was a characteristic of the Great Mother and Moon Goddesses. As a rule, their characteristic feature was the alat sign, half moons with its horns up, as well as the weavers of fate in cosmic mythology of many nations of the world. For example, in the East Slavic mythology, the patroness of the female principle, fate, fertility, water, spinning and weaving, also called the invisible great spinner of the world, was the goddess Makash, 
Makor. One of her attributes was a cornucopia, half moon, with its horns up. They knew about the creation of the world as a process similar to the process of creating a yarn or cloth. The world is spinned as a yarn, is wrapped as a warp yarn, and is weaved as a cloth. How this ancient knowledge was destroyed and the new worldview of priests was imposed and politicized, one can judge by the fact that almost all lectures against paganism in 12th to 14th centuries contained the name of ancient Makash. Makash was an important goddess of the Proto-Slavic pantheon, who was among seven main gods. The meaning of her name Markosh, more precisely Markosh, is very interesting. The etymology of this word is said to be connected with the root which denotes spinning, yarn. In Sanskrit, there is a word moksha, moksa, which means liberation, which is still used in Indian philosophy and religion as the concept of spiritual liberation. In the name Ma Kosh, taken into consideration, old in the European age of the word Ma, the first word means mother, the great mother who gave birth to the world, the goddess of fate. And the word Kosh in old Slavic language means braided basket, braided cart for sheaves, known from the times of the Enolithic, 4000 to 3000 BC, a storage for grain. In the mythology of nations of the world, grains represent an ancient symbol of birth, resurrection and renewal of the world. And from the perspective of the spiritual development of man, the symbol of grain is the formation and establishment of spiritual life in a man, where the highest values are the achievement of non-material goods and spiritual maturation. That is why the initial image of the goddess, patroness of full baskets, as the mother of the true happiness, liberation, had completely different meaning, connected with non-material values of a man. In many ancient cosmological myths of nations of the world, it is noted that it is goddesses who did weaving as an act of cosmic creation. Continuous process, where all coming events, threats, were interweaved in a constantly changing pattern on an unchanging warp. Moreover, warp, the lengthwise threads on a frame, was the symbol of the permanent and constant, which links all the levels of the universe, and weft, the transverse threads, placed perpendicular to the warp threads and interweaved with them, symbolized the inconstant and changeable, quantitative, the nature itself in time and space. The warp and the weft make up a cross. Almost all the goddesses of fate and time in mythology of nations of the world are spinners and weavers. Even nowadays, one can find various mentions, rituals, traditions and legends connected with that. For example, in ancient Egypt, the goddess Neit was worshipped as the initial goddess of sky, wisdom and weaving, out of which the sun god came out and shined. According to myths, in the beginning of times she strained the sky on her weaving loom and weaved the world from the primordial waters, weaved all the living creatures, including men and women. Usually, Neit, Nat, Nit was depicted with the help of the following hieroglyphs. The first hieroglyph means her name, the root NT. The second hieroglyph indicates her symbol, placed on the head, 
and the third hieroglyph means goddess. It is interesting that judging by the root, the name Nate is connected with the root of the word which means to weave, N-T-T. It is also the root of the word existence. Egyptians believe that Nate is connected with the goddess of primordial void, primordial waters, none. The name Nate is also connected by the root with the word water, N-T, thus indicating the connection of Nate with the goddess of the primordial waters. In one of the myths, Nate is said to be the one who illuminated the first face or illuminated the first face surface. Plutarch and Plato quoted the following text about the goddess Nate. I am all things that are, that will be, and that have been, and no mortal has ever unveiled my cover. According to the historical sources, in ancient Egypt there was a prayer to Nate. O oh, the Great Mother, whose birth is unperceivable. O oh, the goddess, young and great, whose cover cannot be unveiled. O oh, open your cover, the precious, because I have no way to you. Come and take my soul and protect it with your hands. We can see similar picture on the other continents, thousand kilometers away from these places. For example, in North America, the indigenous people of Alaska, Indians of the Northern Athabascan ethno-linguistic group have a myth about the goddess Atsintma. It tells that Atsintma opened her eyes in an empty world. Then she weaved a cloth from the flowers of Chimerian, fireweed. In Slavic nations, a plant from the willow herb family, Ivanchai, and stretched it fixing it at the corners on holy mountains. Then she started to sing. It caused the beginning of the universe. It is interesting that fireweed is rather widespread in Alaska as well. Its flowers are arranged according to the four-hold scheme. Its lower ovary is four-sided. With time, it transforms into a long, four-sided box which bursts into four leaves and releases a lot of grains which, thanks to long fuss, have the ability to fly long distances. When we know such details, it is clear why this plant was used while explaining cosmological conceptions. Other nations of the world associated the universe with a plain four-sided brick and voice. The first word, the voiced sound, was associated with a primordial sound. It is interesting that some of them still have ancient elements and attributes of the goddess who created the world. For example, clothing with grid pattern, spinning wheel, and some signs including circle, equal-sided cross, the signs Alatra and Alat. Note, for more information please refer to the book Alatra. All that has already happened, or is yet to happen, occurs here. The Isosmic grid exists, and this is a fact. Knowing the fundamental principles of the structure of the material universe, a person starts to look at the world, the processes and events that are happening in a different way. He understands the meaning of his presence in this world and values every moment of his life.
Primordial Elatra Physics. Isoosmic cell. Isoosmic cell, a basic minimal element in the structure of the isoosmic grid. In the third dimension, it has the form of a cube, with sides representing the isosmic membranes. In the center of the cell, there is one real, unchangeable stationary Po particle. The phantom Po particles, which make up all the elementary particles in the material world, moving spirally, can go through the isosmic cell. In the isosmic cell, there is an important process of partial redistribution of energy and information, subtraction of some part of energy by the real Po particle, and reading the information from the moving phantom Po particle, and also various collisions of two phantom Po particles under the influence of the real stationary Po particle on this process. All this determines the future development, transformation or elimination of matter, which consists of the phantom Po particles. For example, in the visible world, we can see a process of collision of two elementary particles. But how does this process start at the level of the isosmic grid? A process of collision of the first head phantom Po particle from every of these two elementary particles takes place. The collision of two head phantom Po particles always occurs under the influence and control of the real stationary Po particle. This process is accompanied by the emission of significant amounts of energy, and part of it is taken by the real Po particle and redistributed on the system of the real Po particles, the septon field. Note that all successive phantom Po particles, which make up the given elementary particle, invariably pass through the same isosmic membranes and cells which their first head phantom Po particle has passed through. Knowing what takes place in the invisible world when two elementary particles collide, it becomes clear why one and the same reaction, with identical external conditions, is in fact never absolutely identical and there are always minor fluctuations in it. Isoosmic membrane Isoosmic membrane is a unique non-material structure. It represents the size of spatial cube of the isosmic cell. As we have already said, there are six isosmic membranes in each isosmic cell. The main action, which gives life to all the material system, the process of isoosmos, happens through the isosmic membrane, its center. It is characterized by so-called paradox of dimensions. In three-dimensional world, the isosmic membrane has practically no thickness, but at the same time it really exists and its inside space is infinite. In ancient texts and legends, there was different information about the unexplainable inner space of the isosmic membrane, that limitless, eternal space from which the creative force and the initial plan come were called the spiritual world, the world where gods are born primordial, eternal, what always was before the creation of this world. Between the nearby isosmic membranes located on one straight line, 
The absolute distance and size is always observed. If we take a close look at ancient literature, which tells about the world creation, then it is possible to find much in common among various peoples of the world. Although they were at a significant distance from each other, the role of ancestors, connected with the beginning of the cosmic process, was performed by a couple of gods. For example, core emptiness and Pu, translated as night, darkness, that is, the invisible, or Atea, space, and Tetumu, source. Islands of Polynesia in different Polynesian Theocosmogonia. Rangi, sky, and Papa, earth. Maori, the indigenous people of New Zealand. More Asian variation of the myth about the origin of the world of Maori, the indigenous people of New Zealand, tells about the couple Rangi, sky, and Papa, earth. According to the legend, Rangi and Papa had children, 70 sons and daughters, future gods of Maori. For a long time, they stayed in darkness, in cramped space between the bodies of their parents who were in a tight embrace. In the end, five of them tried to push Rangi and Papa apart, though their efforts were in vain. Then, the sixth child, Tain, straightened his mighty back and bumped his hands into Rangi sky and pushed off Papa, Earth. The sky was casted away up and fixed on four poles, Toko. In New Zealand, it was described as the riot of the gods' brothers against their parents, Rangi and Papa, and the following quarrel between brothers. Note, in the described cosmological conception, associative images were given of emptiness, the invisible pole particle, the creation of 72 dimensions was mentioned too. 70 children, and two parents, the separation of six dimensions, which form the material world from 66 dimensions. The sixth dimension, the ruling part of the material world system, where every event in the visible world forms. In Polynesian cosmology, the Earth opposes both the sky consisting of many layers, and the underground world associated with the darkness of Po. Moreover, the functions of the upper and the lower worlds are often mixed together. It is the most typical division in many cosmological conceptions of different nations of the world, where the Earth denoted all the visible material world on the whole the sky, the invisible macrocosm, divided by dimensions, layers, and the underground world, the world of the invisible processes going at the level of microcosm, that what could be divided into the smallest parts, the state of spirits. In ancient Greek literature about the creation of the world, you can find the following. The personification of the initial state of the world, before the structured universe, cosmos, appeared, was chaos. Though the initial word chaos had quite another meaning, different from the modern one. The word chaos derives from the ancient Greek word chaos, from kaivo, to open out, to gape, to open out mouth, to eject, Greek, shining, to gape, and had the meaning of yawning, of a gaping space, the primordial void. Under the name chaos, ancient Greeks meant unmeasurable infinite world space, the initial source of the universe. 
the initial source of all life in the world from which everything originated. That without which nothing else exists and which exists without the other. That is that initial pre-cosmic state from which God created the world as ordered, harmonized cosmos. What is more, there are some mentions that entering into that gaping abyss from which everything originates was allegorically connected with going through fog and darkness. Note the analogy of the isosmic membrane. Moreover, Stoics mentioned that unlike chaos gape, chaos substance was not empty. The chaos substance, according to the Stoics, is a very diffused substance which thickens under the influence of vortex and creates the universe. One can find mentions about the great emptiness, translated by modern translators unfortunately as unordered chaos, for example in ancient Egyptian, Japanese, Chinese, Polynesian mythologies about the creation of the world. This information can also be found in Scandinavian, American, Pre-Columbian and other mythologies of nations of the world. In many ancient manuscripts there are mentions about such concept as zero. Now, this concept exists in many languages of nations of the world from ancient times. For example, in Sanskrit, Shunya, Greek, Miden, which means nothing, zero, Latin, nullis, that means not a one. In the Yoruba language, widespread in the western part of Africa, zero sounds as odo or ofo and means emptiness, nothing, and so on. The English word zero, as well as the French word zero, Spanish zero, and similar names of zero in other languages, derives from Arabic root cipher, meaning emptiness, nothing, absence of anything. In Arabic, the word zero still has the same root. Zero was interpreted as the cause which leads to a change, that which forms substance and what can be made in continuous transformation in the process of isosmos. It was associated with the primordial emptiness, which has in it the principle of creating all things. In ancient times, in the East understanding of existence, was associated with the temporality of being and the short time sojourn of human body in it. And the understanding of the real life was connected with the spiritual world, with the fusion of the personality with the soul and passing into the spiritual world. It is not accidental that zero was depicted as an empty circle thus indicating that there is no death but absolute life inside the circle. Although this is not the only one depiction of zero. For example, in Mesoamerica, the people of the Mayan civilization more often drew zero as an empty shell, although there are also 25 more hieroglyphs which denote the concept of zero, one of which two spirals similar to the Russian letter Z. The Maya called zero Tulakal, and the Aztec simply everything. In Asia, the most popular image of zero, apart from circle, was a dot. For example, in Arabic protoscript, one can find the diacritic mark sukun, silence, calmness, which looks like a small zero. In religious and philosophical teaching of ancient India, Tantrism from Sanskrit Tantra system, braid, yarn, spinning wheel, cloth, text, and so on. There is the Bindu sign, 
literally dot. This concept is interpreted as spot, grain, source, basis. In Sufism, dot in Arabic, nusk, plays an important role in handing down the teaching as the inner knowledge. Primordial Alatra Physics Today, the main topic of discussion for physicists, as well as philosophers of antiquity, is the hypothesis of the existence of a unified field, which is the basis of all phenomena and fundamental interactions of the material universe, from microcosm to macrocosm. Microcosm. How does it happen that at the quantum level, particles are connected regardless of distance, and how does the change in the parameter of one particle cause an instantaneous, higher than the speed of light, change in the state of the other one? Meaning, particles can instantly affect each other despite the distance that separates them, which can amount to an enormous number of light years. Quorums of bacteria. By whom and how is the quorum of microorganisms coordinated? And what allows them to react to the change of external conditions, not as separate beings, but as cells of a single organism? Plants. What enables plants to react to people's thoughts? How does it happen that absolutely different groups of cells, plant cells and cells of the nervous system, communicate among themselves in the same language? Animals. What controls a population, a flock or a swarm? As if a single organism compelling all individuals, without exception, to obey and perform certain collective actions. Human being. What gives rise to the same type of mood of the masses and how is it transmitted? How does their unification into a single emotional crowd occur? Space. Why does a star pull over itself matter of another star, to which it is closely located, and then absorb it completely, prolonging its own life and becoming a supergiant star for a while? What is the collective influence of the communities of planets and galaxies on the processes occurring in space? Why have modern scientists not found the answer to the question, what is dark matter? Knowing the nature and properties of the septum field, it is possible to find the answers to all these questions. Septum field. At the level of the isosmic grid, all real poo particles, although each of them exists in its own isosmic cell, are connected with each other through the common septum field. Note, for more information about this field, refer to the book Alatra, where it is mentioned under the term animal mind. The septum field unites all stationary poo particles into one solid system, managing part of the material world, which functions as one control center only within six dimensions. Note, refer to the book Alatra, the power of the animal mind is limited to six dimensions. In the septum field, there is an immediate informational contact between the real stationary PO particles. It means that in this field, information is transmitted immediately from one real PO particle to another, no matter how far they are placed from each other in the isosmic grid. The fact of the matter is that there is no time in this field. The septum field is a common universal field, thanks to which all the fundamental interactions in the material world take place. It is at the core of any phenomena, process, object and their components. 
both the objects of macrocosm and the objects of microcosm have their own septon field. This is a common field which unites them in their essence, as the real poe particle and the phantom poe particle consist of the elements of this field, septons. This universal field determines the behavior of complex systems. The knowledge of the septon field is key for the understanding of the material world at all levels of its existence. It can give answers to such questions as how does instant data transfer happen in the universe regardless of distance? What system controls and rules the material universe? What is time, space, gravity, electromagnetism, the nature of the electric current? What makes the particles and objects move and strive to survive, interact with each other? How does the process of information transmission, its encoding and decoding by different systems, take place? How does the process of thoughts formation take place? The unique structural element of the septon field, its minimal component, is a septon, the modern term which is used in the primordial electrophysics. The word septon derives from the Latin word septum, which means seven. Such name was given due to the number of elements in this structure. Moreover, taking into account the philosophical context, the concept of septum as part of the animal mind relates in its meaning to both the Latin word septum and the Greek word sept. The Latin word septum means fence. That is, a soft wall dividing some space, room, into parts. Internal enclosing structure, main framework. As it was written in the ancient times, one of the main actions of the animal mind is division and separation of one into parts, divide and rule. The Greek word sept means decay, rotten, that is perishability, destruction, decomposition of the dead, the transformation of the dead under the influence of some conditions which plays a significant role in the cycle of elements. Septon may not be ascribed even to the smallest indivisible Po particle, as it is what creates the Po particle itself, both the real and the phantom one, but it is not the Po particle in its basic essence. The structure of Septon consists of an inclusion of the force of Allard and surrounding six antipode reflections, anti allards that is, overall seven elements. As a figurative example, taking into account many associations of the three-dimensional world, we can say that it is some kind of a mini-machine, a mechanism which transforms the force of a lot into anti a lot, which allows the whole material world to exist. And here is another very important aspect of the creation of the universe, which gives an understanding of what the universe represents now. The drive of the force of Alat for the unified ordered form set motion of the universe from the inside to the outside and started spinning it in the right spiral, that is, towards expansion. So the function to create was set. Simultaneously, while spinning the universe in the right spiral, the force of Alat gave birth to the opposing force, which started spinning in a reverse spiral inside the universe, in the direction which was opposite to the main direction of Alat, from the outside to the inside, bringing matter together into a unified material mind, the animal mind. Thus, the destroying function was set, an opposition to the forces of Alat. So, in such a way, there appeared two directly opposite forces in the universe. The greater force, spinning the universe outwards, and the smaller force, that opposes it within the universe itself. After these two forces had manifested themselves, the universe lost its spherical shape and flattened under their influence, that is, compressed, became flatter. This point is recorded in the cosmic legends of nations of the world, as the cracking of the world egg. 
splitting it in two halves, out of which heaven and earth were created, and divisions, spaces, and waters were placed between them. In ancient times, this structure, which is the main unit of the septum field, was also associatively compared to six smoking mirrors, baneful origins, that surround the shining source, the candle of living light, the true origin. Using modern associative comparisons, six antipode reflections, anti alerts, may be called some kind of micro-holographical objects which exists only thanks to the presence in this world of the force of a lot. The real source of life is only one, and it is hidden not in the external world or the human body, but in the soul. Life can't be temporary. Only existence is temporary. Rigden Japo. All of this temporal world is just an illusion of mirror intersections, which captures the man's attention by false realism of shadows, their play of mutual contemplations. These are multiple mirror reflections, which make up the essence of the illusory world, the world of many pseudocopies. These mirrors, while turning, only distort the reflected light and are not light by their nature. Illusion arises from the seduction of a person by the desires of this world, his unwillingness to enter into a true reality. There are many more reflections, and they attract human attention, focusing him on the dead. The true nature, the inclusion of the force of Alat, was compared to a burning candle. It was mentioned that when the burning candle disappears, Everything visible will disappear and turn into nothing. The candle is a constant burning. The mirrors are constant reflection. Everything is a reflection of something, its cause and effect. Whatever draws human attention more, the mirror play of many reflections of the material world or the true spiritual source, the part of that he becomes in the end. Only the one who is not bound to the visible takes care of the soul. Every poor particle, both the real and the phantom one, is in its essence a concentrated cluster of septons, around which there is its own moderately diffused septon field. It means that a poor particle represents a high concentration of septons in a small space, the isosmic cell. Figuratively, in order to understand the process, a poor particle may be compared with an atmospheric vortex, tornado, where septons are the molecules of the air. Also, a poor particle can be associatively compared with a clump of snow, consisting of many snowflakes, septons. In this concentrated clod Poe particle, there are up to 80% of septons. In its own septon field, which surrounds this clod, up to 20% of septons. 
On the whole, the phantom pole particle, which all the elementary particles consist of, may be associatively compared to a convenient mechanism, intended mainly for storage and transportation of an inner potential, energy and information. And the real core particle, one of the main elements of the isosmic cell, which has a high concentration of septons, may be compared to a convenient mechanism intended for partial redistribution of the inner potential of the phantom pole particle. In early Vedic mythology there was a concept Maya, in Sanskrit literally illusion, which later was introduced to Hinduism and other religions of India. It is interesting that the ancient Indian word Maya means transformation, magic force, deception, illusion, turmayus, weaving an evil spell. The material world Maya, consisting of a collection of many illusions, makes men perceive and see everything in their own way, in false form, which is not the reality, spiritual world. Maya hides reality. As we have already said, the septum field is the basis of the material universe. It forms the basis of all known and unknown to official science, fields and interactions, material objects, organic and non-organic combinations and so on. This field is everywhere. It may be found in all living and non-living objects and phenomena. For example, the planet Earth has its septum field too. What's interesting is that it activates before certain phenomena happen. It was noticed that almost seven to eight hours before a tornado, there is a drastic rise of the septum field intensity in the places where it originates and on its way. According to the latest research in the sphere of seismology and volcanology, conducted by the scientists of the Alatra International Public Movement, in the focal areas of our planet there may be observed a rise of the septum field intensity and its alterations before earthquakes and volcano eruptions. Our experience has proven that we can study these processes, control them, and make accurate forecasts of natural events. Note, for more information, please refer to the report on the problems and consequences of global climate change on Earth, effective ways to solve these problems. Today, the main topic of discussion between physicists, as well as philosophers of antiquity, is the hypothesis of existence of a unified field, which is the basis of all phenomena and fundamental interactions of the material world. Another important unsolved question of modern physics is, what are the dark matter and dark energy, of which nearly 95% of the universe consists? The most surprising fact is that people knew this in ancient times. People possessed knowledge about single unified field and knew the nature of dark matter and dark energy. But in the modern world, the scope of study of this subject is quite limited. Nowadays, many physicists spend their lifetime making tremendous efforts to create new materialistic theories, struggle with the insoluble dilemma of creation of the theory of everything, with searching for a unified field equation which would unite only four fundamental directions known nowadays – gravitational, electromagnetic, weak and strong. But what lies at the basis of these fields? And why is the ancient rule change conditions and everything will change also applicable to them? The mentioned force fields known nowadays are far from the limit of the existing interactions in nature. It is enough to glance at the list of the unsolved problems of modern science on each of its fundamental directions to understand how little people knew about themselves, about the world and its structure. In this case, the following questions are of real interest. 
From where did originally such a thought program, such zealous aspiration to assign by all means to the matter the central role in any grand unification theory, and thereby to strengthen the new acknowledgement of materialism in the consciousness of present and future generations emerge? Who benefits from guiding the mankind in that direction of thinking, and focusing so much attention on the priority of the material nature? and strengthening this program in the human consciousness. Is it really possible to come to an understanding of the unified field under such artificially created conditions, when the modern science doesn't even consider such questions? Why, in very ancient times, the knowledge about the unified field as a unified collective material mind, world mind, unified field of consciousness, cosmic thought basis, prince of this world, and so on, was presented as an antipode to the spiritual world. Why, anyhow, was it mentioned that the human consciousness, his own septum field, where thoughts arise, belongs to the animal nature and is in part of the unified animal mind of the universe? Why were the deepest feelings considered to be the unique human perception, process without the participation of septum field of consciousness, which connected the personality with the soul, spiritual nature, with the spiritual world of an exclusive creative force, offering to the personality an absolute freedom from the power of the animal nature. The primordial electrophysics is so universal and objective that it can be applied in many fields of science. As of today, this is the most well-formed theory which allows to find answers to currently unsolved problems of physics. There is no need even to go deep into the complexity of cosmic processes, but just try to answer simple questions. What is human thought? How is it formed and what does it consist of? What lies at the basis of phenomena related to it? What are the consciousness and subconsciousness fields composed of? What power is hidden in the human attention? And why is it an action trigger? How does actually the process of information transmission in the world, invisible to the human eye, happen? After all, the basis of all these processes is pure physics. The primordial electrophysics not only answers these questions, but also gives an absolute understanding of who a human being is and what the primordial sense of human existence consists in. Septon field, the animal mind, is the highest by the organization self-conscious intelligence structure of matter which perceives itself as living in the real world. It was mentioned since the most ancient times as the all-pervading force which originates in the material world, as its higher intelligence, as a kind of pervasive, dominating in this material world principle, the animal mind, which is opposite in functions to the spiritual world. And human consciousness was mentioned as the material part of this intelligence structure, as opposed to the non-material part of the person, spiritual nature, the soul. Since ancient times in human society, there was knowledge of the existence of power, demonic essence, which was intelligent and to a great extent exceeded human abilities in the material world, but it was insignificant compared to the forces of the spiritual world. Along with the concepts of the main meaning of human existence, the spiritual life, the soul, people knew also about life and the material world order. They knew that every natural phenomenon is produced by the force, which is inherent to the entire matter, by septum field. They called some of its manifestations spirits, the invisible forces of the world, and they had an understanding that all surrounding objects of nature have supernatural doubles. Any object in the material world 
has its own septum field. People of Melanesia and Polynesia knew about all-pervading spirit mana, a supernatural force, latent or potential, which is not perceived sensually, brings mainly evil for a person, and only at first sight seems good. It is interesting that in other parts of the world there are also echoes of this knowledge. The Slavs, since ancient times, have also preserved a mythological character Mara, a malicious spirit that causes harm to people. In Buddhist mythology, a huge number of evil spirits representing negative emotions of a person, desire, hatred, doubt and so on, is subordinated to it. Its main function is considered to be the creation of obstacles to people following the spiritual way, passing off a lie for truth, negative for positive. Its task is to live their spiritual life to the death. Various ancient nations had an understanding that all things in the world were endowed with a force which does not belong to these things. It was considered that all-pervading force is present everywhere in the cosmos and also in people who were obsessed by this force, sorcerers and so on. These people manipulated manna to get material benefits that is different from spiritual, momentary desires, such as a recovery from illness, good weather, success in battle, achievement of wealth and power. This force formed the basis of magical actions. However, there was also an understanding that no one possesses that power himself. Everything he did using this force, he did by means of spirits belonging to this force, which eventually started controlling him as a slave. All this knowledge about the material world and the force which this temporary world was endowed with was secondary on the background of the basic concept of the spiritual world. People had an understanding about the importance of the spiritual nature of the soul and that the personality, not the body, but who a person feels inside, can during this person's life, thanks to the merger with the soul, go to the spiritual world thereby acquiring an absolute freedom from the power of the animal nature of the material world. This, in fact, is the main purpose of a human's life. In this illusory world, everything is fleeting like a mirage in the desert. Therefore, everything that we possess in the physical world has no value, for it is passing. We must hurry to learn to feel with the soul and to comprehend the beautiful because everything in this material world, including human life, is nothing more than foam bubbles on the sea sand. In ancient times, gifted people who possessed a force were referred to as those having an opportunity. Some possessed it from their birth, and some acquired it in the course of development of special techniques. In essence, it is the force of a lot. But the more force was in a person, the more active his or her septum field became. Force is force. Here, everything depended on what the person chose, where he or she invested their attention in. As they said in ancient times, either his living flame, the soul, his deepest feelings, of the curling smoke of the illusory world, thoughts, emotions from the animal nature. If a man focused the most of his attention on the septum field, that is, on the desires, thoughts of material life, then as a result he got magic and catastrophic consequences for his personality. If a man directed this force to the spiritual self-development, he reached the main goal of his life his spiritual transformation and inner freedom from the material world, from the dominating influence of septum field.
At the heart of these changes and transformation of a person, there is pure physics. According to the ancient primordial knowledge, the force of the attention is an enormous vital force in which the creating force of Allah is concentrated. It is thanks to the power of attention that the personality exercises the freedom of choice and forms his afterlife destiny by every moment of his life. Where a person puts his attention in a potential end, that is what becomes his reality. Why is it so important to remember that each of our words, each of our actions does not pass without a trace and affect not only the fate of a human and the development of mankind, but also the state of the entire planet. Where a person puts his attention in a potential end, that is what becomes his reality. Any attempts to draw attention to the material world, its desires and delusions, subsequently always form the reality of suffering extended in time. That is why in the spiritual treatises it was said that it's important for man to focus his attention constantly on the spiritual inner world. Only in this case the person will invest his precious inner potential to the formation of life after death and not spend it on the formation of death during the life, sub-personality. In the language of the primordial Alatra physics, when 90% of attention is paid to the material life, desires and thoughts of the material nature, and 10% to the care about the spiritual condition, and during the lifetime a person forms for himself a sub-personality. But if a person spends no more than 10% of power of his attention to the material life, and 90% of attention focuses on the state of domination of spiritual life in his inner world, then this leads to the spiritual transformation of that person. This is not philosophy or religion, but the fundamental laws of physics. In ancient India, it was considered that the basis of magic are the supernatural forces which were connected with the force of world illusion, Maya. There was a whole doctrine about Maya, which was connected with the word magic. It is interesting that among those peoples which have already established the institution of religion and politics, magic practices occupy a dominant position, a secret knowledge of the priests and the powerful, their leaders. At the heart of magic always lies the desire for power. The principle of the animal mind, divide and rule, repeated fractally in human consumer society at various times. Today, it is possible to observe in its entirety the result of the work of the unified septum field of its stationary Po particles and their effects on the consciousness of people as a part of this field. This is a multiple fragmentation of a human society into small pieces on the basis of any characteristic, starting with nationality, religion, social status of a person, the presence of territorial borders, and ending with all sorts of institutions of power, hierarchies, and so on. Divide and rule, this is a reflection of what is happening in people's minds and who actually manipulates them and for what purposes. Knowing the foundations of the primordial Alatra physics, it is possible to understand that consciousness with its multiple thoughts is only the septum field of the animal nature, which easily manipulates man, taking his potential for its life. However, due to the spiritual development of a person, a completely different perception opens, independent of the septum field, that allows a person to get free from the dominance of the septum field and which is genuine source of forces, the soul. In reality, everything is simple. Primordial Alatra Physics Real Stationary Po Particle
The next topic in the report reveals unique information about how the invisible world of matter is formed. Let's take a closer look at what a real pore particle is, or as it is also called a stationary pore particle, and its properties. Real stationary pole particle is the only indivisible and foundational fundamental particle of the material world, or rather non-material field structure, located in the center of the dimensional cube of exosmic cell. It is called real or stationary due to the uniqueness of its position, functions and characteristics. Unlike phantom pole particle, which make up all elementary particles in the universe. A real pole particle represents a high concentration of septons in a small space, the center of the exosmic cell. Real pole particle is constantly and permanently in a stationary, relatively motionless state in its exosmic cell. In each exosmic cell there is only one real pole particle. There is no isosmic cell which does not have this particle. Each real Poe particle within its isosmic cell performs the leading role in the correction of the movement and partial redistribution of inner potential of phantom Poe particles passing through this cell. It reads the information and withdraws usually 10% of the inner potential from the passing phantom Poe particle. Moreover, the real Poe particle receives the entire information about the elementary particle and its movement, reading it from the first head, phantom Poe particle, which passes through this cell and is a part of that elementary particle. This Poe particle is called real because exactly this stationary particle, in the meaning of a non-material field structure, stably exists in this material world. Unlike all its temporary objects and phenomena, which consist of phantom pole particles. It is the information redistributor and the absorber of energy, the force of a lot, due to which all of the material world exists. It is important to note that never, under whatever conditions or circumstances, can the real pole particle collide with the phantom pole particle. Even if there is a collision of two phantom pole particles in the isosmic cell, then the real pole particle will only absorb the emission of energy from this collision of two particles and redistribute their information, but remain steady itself that is relatively immobile in the center of the azosmic cell. Nothing in this world, no destructive force of it, can shake and break the system of real stationary pole particles, which are in a strictly predetermined position in the azosmic grid. A simple example, the destructive force of the thermonuclear explosion is based on use of energy of nuclear fusion reaction, for example, synthesis of one atomic nucleus of helium and two atomic nuclei of deuterium, where a tremendous amount of energy is released. But if, in the three-dimensional visible world, as a result of this synthesis, it is possible to observe the explosion of an enormous power. In advanced quantum physics, at the level of primary processes occurring in a zoismic grid, in particular in each corresponding zoismic cell, we can observe only the process of collision of two phantom Po particles. The more active redistribution of their inner potential, that is, the transmission of more energy and information to real Poe particle, and further redistribution of the received energy and information onto the system of real Poe particles in the azoismic grid. Associatively, such a process can be compared to how an observer sees a very realistic explosion with devastating consequences on a computer screen. 
at the same time at the level of pixels of the monad matrix. This explosion is simply a systematic program transmission of the information about the picture and redistribution of energy, thanks to which this picture is visible on the screen to the observer. This associative example clearly shows the difference between visible and invisible processes that make up the essence of one and the same phenomenon. So, at the level of the microcosm, real coparticles and phantom coparticles in the isosmic grid, only a transmission of energy and information occurs, whereas at the level of objects of the macrocosm, consisting of phantom coparticles, this results in both visible and invisible changes. Knowing the functions of phantom and stationary coparticles and their operation, it is possible to understand where the energy appears from and disappears to, and how it is redistributed within the material world. A simple example with a billiard ball. What does a person observe while playing billiards? His attention is focused on the ball, its movement, its deceleration on the cloth of the billiard table, and its stop. But where does the energy which forces the ball to move and participate in the subsequent actions appear from? And where then does it disappear to, forcing the ball to stop? All that the player can logically track are the following phrases. Emergence of the thought, transmission of impulse to the hand muscle, transmission of energy to the cue, transmission of energy from the cue to the ball, the movement of the ball, its deceleration, stop, owing to friction with the cloth, and attenuation of the transmitted impulse. And, if the player is also an adherent of classical physics, then he will consider the law of conservation of mechanical energy, the law of momentum conservation, molecular interactions, the impact of gravitational forces, and so on. But what is really happening in terms of quantum physics? What in the invisible world contributes to the emergence of a thought itself? And how, after the attenuation of an impulse of the object of the visible world, the billiard ball, does the absorption and redistribution of energy and information in the quantum world occur? Let's look for the answers to these questions together and study even more thoroughly and in depth the knowledge given in the report on the isosmic grid, the septum field, the functioning of real and phantom pro particles. In one of the greatest ancient Chinese philosophical treatises, Guanzi, comprising the texts of different authors, 4th to 3rd centuries BC, the substantive fullness and orderliness of the universum is emphasized with the definition of space and time by the combination of words Zhou He, time and spatial coherence. It is interesting that the hieroglyph He Connection means six connections. Liu He, a formula of mutual coordination of transformations, Hua of world substances in space, four parts of the world, top and bottom. The concept of Zhou He is defined herein as a certain net catching heaven and earth, which in their turn are a net for the darkness of things. There are certain regularities concerning real, stationary Po particle. Real Po particle is stable. It never disappears anywhere until the material world exists. Quantity of real Po particles in the universe is always constant because the real Po particles are an integral part of the azalsmic grid. Real Po particle can't be split or destroyed by any force coming from the material world system. Phantom Po particle. Phantom pole particle, which forms the visible world of matter, is not less interesting. Let's take a closer look at what a phantom pole particle is. 
and what functions and properties it has. Phantom pole particle is an energy cluster consisting of septons, around which there is a modest rarefied septon field. Phantom pole particle has inner potential, more precisely its carrier. It is interesting that the inner potential is renewed only through the process of isosmos. The inner potential of a phantom pole particle determines its proportionality. The unique power of phantom pole particle is the smallest phantom pole particle a lot. The unique properties of this particle we will consider further in the report. Phantom pole particle is an ordered structure which is in constant spiral movement. It can exist only in the bound state with other phantom Po particles, which in conglomeration form primary manifestations of matter. Because of its unique functions, it is a kind of phantom, ghost, for the material world. Considering that all matter consists of phantom Po particles, this gives it a characteristic of an illusory structure and form of existence dependent on the process of isosmos, meaning filling up of the inner potential. Phantom pole particles are non-material formations, but chained with each other in a serious connection, built according to the information program, in a certain quantity and sequence, at a certain distance from each other. They form the basis of structure of any matter, determine its variety and properties. All this thanks to their inner potential, energy and information. Phantom Po particle is what all elementary particles, photon, electron, neutrino, etc., as well as all particles carriers of interactions consist of in their basis. This is the primary manifestation of matter in this world. Interesting. What represents the energy of the inner state of a microcosm object? It is a combination of inner potentials, energy and information, of phantom pole particles that constitute an object of the microcosm. This means that the energy of the inner state of an elementary particle equals to the sum of inner potentials of phantom pole particles, which such an elementary particle consists of. At this stage of development of scientific and technical progress, the modern science has certain opportunities to explore microobjects and their interactions at the subatomic level. But these technical possibilities are limited, as they allow to observe only within the three dimensional world and leave a lot to be desired. Figuratively speaking, it is now similar to how an observer tries to explore a diffuse spot of visible light in a fog while being at a distance of several kilometers from its source, evaluated by phenomena visible to his eyes, assume about its integrity, indivisibility. However, this supposition won't correspond to the reality, since when approaching this luminous object, and in the microcosm it is necessary to take into account huge distances between micro-object components. The observer will see already several luminous objects instead of the diffused spot, and approaching closer to the object, in the best case, he will distinguish that it is, for example, a light from light bulbs attached to an electric power line poles, which are located in a row at a distance of several meters from each other. If we apply that to the processes occurring in the microcosm, it is that maximum which the observer of the three-dimensional world can see, being in the system of the material world, being himself a part of the system. The question like what does each bulb consist of and where does electricity come from? If we figuratively compare it to the phantom pole particles which make up a micro-object, will remain open for him. Phantom particle, Greek phantasma, a ghost, 
or illusory Po particle is called so because of its main property and ability to instantly disappear nowhere and reappear in the space of a zoismic grid, according to a new information program. In ancient treatises, it was figuratively compared to a steam appearing for a while and instantly disappearing. That is why, from ancient times, there are mentions of all life of man, matter, universe is illusory. Life cannot be temporary. Only existence can be temporary. Rigdan Japo. A phantom Po particle, being in conjunction with other phantom Po particles, constantly moves along their common spiral trajectory from the moment of its appearance until its disappearance in an azoismic membrane. Phantom Po particle possesses an important property to penetrate through azoismic membranes and participate in the process of azoismos. Due to this property of phantom Po particle, all matter has a discrete character of movement, from the Latin word discretus, separated, intermittent. As we mentioned before, a phantom pole particle exists only in conjunction with other phantom pole particles, forming together matter at different levels of its organization. A phantom core particle doesn't exist separately. If we remove even one phantom core particle from the structure of an elementary particle, then it results in either a destruction or transformation of this elementary particle. For example, if we remove one pore particle from a photon, which consists of three phantom pore particles, then the following process will take place. The given phantom pore particle will instantly disappear in the isosmic membrane, and following it, the two remaining phantom pore particles will disappear in the isosmic membrane as well. And as a result, this photon will cease to exist. In sacred legends, myths, and religious doctrines of different nations of the world, numerous mentions of the illusory nature of this world have been preserved. In this report, some of those examples are provided. Indians of North America considered smoke to be a symbol of the fleetingness of life, a means of communication with gods. The pillar of the smoke rising from an aperture of a wigwam or a yurt symbolized a world axis, a salvatory path from time and space into the eternity and infinity. No, that of the transient, there is no endurance. And of the eternal, there is no cessation. This has verily been observed by the seers of the truth after studying the nature of both. In Islamic tradition, all the material world surrounding a person until his death is defined by the word dunya. From the moment of death for each person, this world comes to an end and he enters the next world, ahira. Dunya is finite, and Ahira is eternal. Therefore, each person living in this world should think about it and try to deserve Allah's mercy, both in this and in the next world. In the Quran, Allah says about imaginary delights of this world, possession of which is the aim of infidels. Ossetians, one of indigenous peoples of the Caucasus, believed that there was a world of reality, the real world, where the soul of the deceased went, and the earthly world, the illusory world, the world of the imaginary, illusive and false.
In Buddhist doctrine, there are many interesting concepts, which unfortunately today are already religious ideological adaptations of more Asian knowledge known to various nations of the world. For example, the doctrine about impermanence and variability is common to the Upanishads, ancient Hindu religious and philosophical treatises, and to early Buddhism, the doctrine of the universal impermanence, Anitya, the word can be translated as impermanent, not eternal, fragile, transitory. Sanskrit, Anitya, Chinese, Wu Chan, Japanese, Mu Jo, says that everything in the world is in constant motion and nothing is constant, including stars, planets, and so on. Based on the teaching about elements and momentariness of life, Ksani Kavada, ultimate reality consists of single moments, dharmas, dharmas, possessing signs, from the Sanskrit root dhri, that means to hold, to maintain, are nominal, multiple, dynamic, atomic, and incomposable substrata carriers of elements into which the stream of existence falls apart. Each dharma carries only one specific sign, feature. Dharmas in Eastern philosophy are the particles that flash and fade away instantly. Instant manifestation from an unknown source constituting a constantly changing stream, flow, and operating under specific laws of their own nature. Every moment, dharmas flash and disappear, forming a new pattern, sign, new combination determined by law of the interdependent penetration, a pratitya sumatpada, coordination of elements, dharmas, the law of causality, codependent origination of elements, when an element is always after another and before another without an essential influence on each other, and a karma. Dharmas are in constant notion in the flow of formation and destruction. Each element exists one moment, sana, and becomes like a point in time and space. The material world is a never-ending flow of dharmas, which inherently are simple, indivisible. Human perception of the world is similar to perception of frames of a moving film strip. The frames replace each other so quickly that a person has a full illusion of stable and lasting reality, pictures of the surrounding world and people living in it. It changes so quickly that the process of transition to the new content is unobservable. Actually, neither matter nor substance exist. There is only a flow of successive dharmas, separate elements. And this flow is a chaotic, unconditional process. Each element appears in accordance with the law of dependent origination. It is emphasized that what is perceived by an individual as I is just an illusion suggested to the person by skandhas, combinations of dharmas by one principle of psychophysical activity. As a consequence, this, in its turn, entails suffering and misery experienced by such I. The human being is a guest in this world. What he is born with is what he leaves with, without taking any of its material treasures. During your life, be quick to increase the spiritual and moral wealth in yourself. The spiritual riches for it is the only undying treasure, the spiritual power, which opens a way to true immortality for the personality. Ita.
So then, let's summarize the information about the phantom pore particle. As we can see, there are certain regularities concerning phantom pore particles. Phantom pore particle has inner potential. It is its carrier, renewed in the process of isosmos. According to its inner potential, phantom pore particle has its proportionality. The unique power phantom pore particle, a lapt, is the smallest phantom pore particle. With the destruction of micro objects or its transformation, phantom pore particle, being a part of it, can irrevocably disappear in a zoismic membrane. And at its creation, it can arise from a zoismic membrane in the process of a zoismos. Phantom pore particle is unstable. It can disappear from the material world and again appear in it with a renewed inner potential, energy, and information program. Phantom pore particle exists only in conjunction with other phantom pore particles. All elementary particles consist of certain quantity of phantom pore particles. The quantity of phantom pore particles in the universe is not constant, but it is much less than that of real stationary pore particles. The main difference between real and phantom pore particles. Why are phantom and real particles named in a similar way? Po particles? The name Po particle, the particle consisting of Po, is taken from the antiquity as a symbol of the smallest unit of the material world, manifested due to the forces of a lut through the septon field. Phantom pole particle and real pole particle are absolutely different in their characteristics and functions. They are united only by the common component of the material world, septum. Their common name Po is not only an indicator of the smallest unit, particle, of the material world, but is also a homage to the primordial knowledge. In extreme antiquity, in one of the first legends, it was said that the whole world is created from Po grains. Phantom Po particles and real Po particles cardinally differ from each other in functions and mission. Real, stationary Po particles form the basis of the invisible world of matter, the unified septon field, which has a major impact on the visible world, including the three-dimensional space, and exercise the general control of the world of matter. While phantom Po particles form the basis of the visible world of matter and are, thanks to the concentrated clot of septons, carriers of inner potential, that is energy and information. As it was mentioned, in ancient times, processes of the invisible world were explained by the phenomena and objects visible and clear for a person. Formation of the world from invisible smallest particles was explained by the example of seed, of the creative spirit in it, as a life germ, and also by the example of the smallest grains of those cereal crops, which were known to the local people in everyday life. We will give you several brief examples showing that such a knowledge existed among nations living in different continents. Asia In Hinduism, a seed means a divine spirit, Atman, which is in the center of life. And seed grain symbolizes a life seed, much in little. Africa. According to one of the versions of cosmogonic myth of the African Dogon tribe, the world originated from the word Ama, the primordial sound, which gave rise to the infinitely small Kiza Uzi, which is related to the symbol of Po grain or Fornio grain, the most ancient cereal crop of Africa. 
America. American Indians believe that a maize ear with all its seeds represents all people, all things in the universe, and so on. In ancient times, the difference between particles was explained by associative examples of fish, figurative comparison with real Po particle, and bird, figurative comparison with phantom Po particle. The element of fish is water. The fish is not visible even in a small lake, but it exists there. The lake is limited by coasts. Therefore, the fish lives only with its limits, comparison with isosmic cell. The element of bird is the sky. Unlike the fish that doesn't leave the lake, the bird can fly to different lakes. Figurative comparison with the continuous movement of phantom pole particle. Summarizing the above, let's look at the main differences between real and phantom pole particles. Real Po particles form invisible world of matter. Phantom Po particles form the visible world of matter. Each particle resides separately in its azoismic cell. It is connected with other particles only through their common septum field. Phantom Po particle cannot exist separately. It disappears immediately in his oismic membrane. It exists only in conjunction with other Po particles, forming elementary particles, consisting of three or more phantom Po particles. Motionless, stationary, constantly reside in their azoismic cell. Mobile, constantly move along a spiral trajectory. Exercise a partial withdrawal of energy and reading the information from the phantom Po particles passing through a cell and redistribution of the received potential on the system of real Po particles, septum field. Move through azoismic cells, penetrate through azoismic membrane, participate in the process of azoismos. It can appear instantly and disappear instantly in different areas of azoismic grid. The quantity of real Po particles is constant and invariable. The quantity of phantom Po particles varies, however, it is much less than that of real Po particles. Primordial Alatra Physics. It may seem to you that I am now walking around the real town and that this physical body is moving around the real physical world in pursuit of truly great moment. However, what is in fact going on at the level of the microcosm? Billions of phantom pole particles are moving around the isosmic grid, matrix, inevitably and unavoidably passing through the isosmic membranes. Even if we watch a man sitting motionless, in fact, this is just an illusion. Because actually, a very rich and intensive informational exchange is taking place, which is his life, his movement, which remains unnoticed both by him and by us. Owing to what are this motion and this information exchange going on? Thanks to what does this whole material world exist? What happens beyond the quantum limit and in what way does the attention of the person affect his destiny? Продолжение следует... 
The fundamental process through which the material world exists is isosmos. Isosmos. is osmos an inner energy impetus, carrying in it the potential, that is the force and information program of any action in the material world, including the emergence of life. Everything in the material world exists due to inner potential. It is its quantity and its prompt process of replenishment of any object, field, particle and so on, that defines the quality and the quantity of existence of this object, phenomenon, etc., in the visible and invisible material world. Understanding the process of isosmos, it is possible to find answers to many questions of physics, including quantum physics. For example, today it is known that the main characteristic of atom is its inner energy. As it is known, the atom represents a quantum system, that is, it obeys the laws of quantum mechanics. Its total inner energy is quantized, that is, takes a discrete, intermittent range of values that correspond to the stationary, stable, invariable in time states of the atom. But why can the energy of atom change only abruptly by a quantum transition of an atom from one stationary state to another? Why can, in quantum mechanics, the angular momentum and energies of the movement of a particle in a limited area of space can take only a series of discrete values? What is the basis of these processes? In modern science, it is claimed that the quantization of energy of atom is a consequence of wave properties of electron. But what does the electron itself consist of? And how does its transformation from a particle to a wave and vice versa occur? What initially determines the quantum state of the atoms of chemical elements? These and many other questions of physics become clear when you know the foundations of the primordial electrophysics. The word isosmos is formed from two words, iso and osmos. The Greek word iso is formed from the preposition is. It has several meanings. In everyday life, iso is used within the meaning of in, inside, from within, within the limits of. But it is interesting that in spiritual treatises, this word is used in the phrase inner person, that is, in the concept of soul, inner self. According to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And the Greek word osmos means a push, impulse, pressure. Process of Isosmos. Let's examine an important process of the microcosm, which occurs in an isosmic cell, more precisely in its isosmic membrane. Let's remind that in the center of the isosmic cell there is a real stationary Po particle. 
And each side of the spatial cubic cell consists of a unique non-material structure, isosmic membrane. In the three-dimensional world it has no thickness, there is no time in it. However, it's in the space connected with the non-material world is infinite. Phantom Po particle can pass through an azoismic cell. And usually only one Phantom Po particle passes through one cell in one moment. In other cases, maximum two Phantom Po particles can pass simultaneously through different sides of the spatial cube of an azoismic cell. In such cases, the processes of collision of Phantom Po particles with each other in a zoismic cell are likely to happen. Such a process of collision of particles within a zoismic cell happens with the direct influence of the septum field of real, stationary Po particle on it. As it has already been mentioned in the report, Phantom Po particle has an important property. It is able to penetrate into the isosmic membrane and participate in the process of isosmos. That means that it is capable to disappear instantly in the isosmic membrane from the material world and appear instantly in it. And moreover, in any place of isosmic grid, emerging from isosmic membrane of another isosmic cell, but already with a renewed inner potential, energy and structural information. So then. How does the process of isosmos take place? The process of azoismos in the three-dimensional world is performed only through the geometrical center of one of six membranes of azoismic cell. The spiral structure of an elementary particle is like screwed in by a head phantom Po particle in the geometrical center of azoismic membrane. Thanks to the process of azoismos, the phantom Po particle appears in another azoismic cell with a renewed reserve of energy. According to the old or renewed or a completely new program, which was programmed in it when it was in the inner space of the membrane. Subsequent phantom Po particles, which make up the same elementary particle, follow the same spiral way as the head phantom Po particle passing through the same azoismic cells and the same azoismic membranes. Thus, vortex disturbances are formed during the spiral movement of these structures through azoismic space. What does a renewed inner potential of a phantom Po particle, which every time is replenished and corrected in the process of azoismos, mean for the material world? It can be called in general evolution, creation, transformation, destruction, renovation, resources, reserves and opportunities. This unique reserve of energy, which phantom Po particle provides from the non-material world in ancient times, was called the forces of Alat. It is that force due to which all the material world exists. Exactly for the concentration of this force in the various places of azoismic grid, the septum field of real Po particles hunts, feeding with it the existence of its system, system of the animal mind. According to the ancient spiritual knowledge, it is the force of Allah that orders everything in the visible and the invisible world, makes everything move and transform according to a specific plan. Information of the non-material world In ancient times it was called the primary lotus plan, the plan and will of God, the will of the spiritual world. The structured information sets characteristics, parameters, properties, the program of action, and so on, to the objects and phenomena of the material world. It is interesting to trace the etymology of the word information from ancient times, informatio, the Latin word meaning a representation, 
an explanation, a statement, interpretation, concept, idea, the conception. It is necessary to distinguish the general concept of the modern word information and the concept of meaning, which is embedded in the word information in the described processes of physics of the microcosm. You can familiarize yourself in detail with the etymology of this word in the report on the page 68. In the book Alatra, on page 181, it is said, the main function of the first dimension is the initial inner impetus of energy. It is the person's attention that starts the process of movement at the level of the first dimension. Everything starts with it. This initial attention on the personality is the primary force of the observer. This is his freedom. Where you direct your primary attention at is what you're activating. Man does not realize the full significance of the actions that have happened at the level of the first dimension, but later he feels the consequences they have on his fate as quite real. Transmission and distribution of energy and information. How does the transmission and distribution of energy and reading of information in isosmic cell occur? Let's explain this process by the example of withdrawal of a part of inner potential from a head phantom pore particle. Let's remind that it is located in the head of the coupling of phantom pore particles, forming an elementary particle. Figuratively speaking, it is like a locomotive and wagons, which form a train. The number of wagons in it, it is an amount of phantom pore particles forming this elementary particle. Why do we focus and pay close attention on it? The fact is that a real Po particle reads the information about an entire micro-object, about the whole compound of the phantom Po particles which constitute an elementary particle, from the first head phantom Po particle. And secondly, if the real Po particle, influencing the process by the force of its own septum field, changes the trajectory of the head phantom Po particle's movement, by the force of its own septum field, then respectively the trajectory of the movement of other phantom Po particles being in this compound changes. Passing through the same azoismic cell as their head phantom Po particle, they only lose a part of energy which is withdrawn from them by a real Po particle due to its own septum field. How does the energy withdrawal process by a real Po particle occur? As soon as a phantom Po particle, having passed the azoismic membrane, has renewed its inner potential and entered a new azoismic cell, the process of excitation of the septum field of the real stationary Po particle located in this cell occurs. The real Po particle starts to perform functions equivalent, figuratively speaking, to a role of a customs officer, a collector of taxes, energy, and supervisor reading the information. The nature of the force of the real Po particle's own septum field is such that a phantom Po particle in its movement within the isosmic cell space passes around the real Po particle. And this sets a spiral movement to the phantom Po particle and along with it, to all the objects and phenomena of the material world. Thus, just when their own septum field of a phantom Po particle enters their own septum field of a real Po particle, an energy withdrawal process, usually 10%, and reading of the information by a real Po particle occurs. In turn, the real Po particle transfers the borrowed part of a potential of a phantom Po particle to the system, the unified septum field of the real Po particles, the animal mind.
By this way, the system of real poor particles, the unified septum field, controls everything that occurs in the material world, redistributes, transforms and consumes the energy necessary for maintenance of its existence. Moreover, depending on certain conditions, the system, the unified septum field, by means of each real poor particle can indirectly or directly influence the processes occurring inside the zoosmic cells, modify and transform the quality of these processes, the course, the direction and so on, to strengthen or weaken the effect of phantom poor particles. It depends on this correction by the real poor particle, where exactly, which further direction, and for enhancement of activation of which programs the inner potential of a phantom pore particle will be applied. Thus, it will affect in general the vital activity of the micro-object consisting of these phantom pore particles. Thus, with the special attention of the system to the process which involves a compound of phantom pore particles, constituting this or that elementary particle, the direction of the movement of this coupling of phantom pore particles and their inner potential can variably change. For example, according to the initial information received during the azoismic process, one of the options of movement of a head phantom pore particle presupposed the direction of its movement to the opposite membrane in an azoismic cell. But, because of purposeful influence and correction of the information by a real Po particle, the head phantom Po particle changed the direction of its movement and came out, for example, in the nearby membrane of this isoismic cell. Let's remind that initial information which is set in the potential of a phantom Po particle during the process of isosmos initially has a limited multivariability of possible actions in the material world which includes also various allowable options of the influence of the system, the animal mind, the septum field, which is the basis of all interactions and processes of the material world. We influence a particular situation, its possible outcome, and a resolution in the world that is invisible to us by the fact of contemplating from the perspective of the observer from the animal nature or from the spiritual nature, since we make a choice. Each situation is kind of an answer, not only to your presence in this place here and now, but also to how exactly you are observing yourself in this moment. From the book Alatra. Along with all of the aforementioned ancient knowledge of the processes which are taking place at the level of a zoismic grid, in the primordial Alatra physics there is also the knowledge about how it is possible to get free energy, being aware of the functioning and operation of the invisible world. The term free energy does not refer to the terms Helmholtz free energy or Gibbs free energy known nowadays in physics and in physical chemistry. The term free energy in the primordial Alatra physics should be understood as a derivative of the universal active force which manifests itself at the excitation of the own septum field of a real Po particle located in an isoismic cell. In fact, that is the generation of free energy based on the excitation of the septum field of real, stationary, particles in a zoismic grid. Understanding of the essence of this energy doesn't contradict the general fundamental concept of energy in modern physics, which implies the ability of material systems to operate when they are changing their state, of the energy as of a unified common measure of qualitatively various forms of the motion of matter, preserved at their inconversions. On the contrary, it reveals its fundamental principles, the knowledge of this universal force provides fundamental answers to many pressing questions of modern physics, including an answer to the question of how it is possible to simply and freely get the same electric energy 
in unlimited quantity regardless of availability of natural resources in any dimensional point of the Azoismic grid. Associative examples of the process of isosmos, transmission and distribution of energy and information. All this motion in the microcosm, the process of isosmos, and also transformations occurring at the level of isosmic grid, the influence of real tau particles on phantom pore particles, is possible to explain figuratively using the associative examples clear for most of the people of modern civilization. Imagine that you are an observer who is at a space station and conducts a surveillance of a certain transport hub of railway communication on the Earth. In the beginning, you see simply a point. When approaching the object by means of optical equipment, the point turns into a set of strips. And, with multiple increase, you already see the congestion of different trains, each of which stands on its railway with its number of wagons, and so on. If we draw an associative parallel, with the structure of elementary particle, then each rolling stock with trailing wagons represents a certain elementary particle. The number of wagons in it is the number of phantom Po particles composing this elementary particle. By the appearance, the trains are identical for the observer, with universal covered wagons. However, the filling of the wagons of each train can be different. People, animals, gravel, coal, petrol, acid, alkali, and so on. Associatively, it is like different bunches of phantom Po particles filled with different inner potentials are a part of the composition of the animate and inanimate matter and natural phenomena. For example, represent an electron or other elementary particle which make up objects of a microcosm constituting in turn a part of a structure of a human, an animal, grass, water, the planet Earth, distant stars, and so on. In the potential, energy and information of each Po particle is in our associative comparison and in the content of which wagon of the train, which is inaccessible to the observer's look. There are no empty wagons here. Appearance of the wagons of different trains is identical, but each train transports its cargo. Railway lines, locomotives, drivers, all these are figuratively different kinds of information, which in total defines a variety of matter, the direction of its motion, transformation, the cause of further events, and so on. A real stationary Po particle in an isoismic cell is both a traffic controller in its area that not only solely manages the movement of trains and maintains supervision of its area, in the azoismic cell, reads from the locomotive, the first head phantom Po particle, all the information on the passing train, train length, contents of its wagons, its routes, etc. The traffic controller may reduce or increase train speed, regulate train traffic, also carrying out railroad switches, totally changing the direction of the movement of the whole train. And in special cases, when the train contains a diplomatic wagon, a lat power phantom Po particle, the traffic controller has to remain indifferent to the passing of such a specific wagon having the immunity status. A real stationary Po particle in an isoismic cell is both a traffic controller in its area and a customs officer in the assigned sector, controlled area, where the own septum field of the real Po particle is a kind of a customs area, which withdraws from, extracts for each train passing on, through its site, a sort of fee, a tribute as tax collector at customs for the carriage of transit of any cargo. That is the real Po particle withdraws 10% of inner potential from each phantom Po particle passing through 
This is always Mixel. All trains passing through the area, as always Mixel, run non-stop, bypassing the supervisory point, station, so to say, a kind of the situation center of a real Po particle. Thus, approaching it as close as possible, they pay a tribute at distance, passing through the customs area, the real Po particle's own septum field. The traffic controller almost instantly shares the received data and a part of the withdrawn cargo with other traffic controllers of the system. Considering that information and energy between real Po particles is transmitted instantly in their common septum field, we can understand how the system of real Po particles, the system of animal mind, controls the material world, can influence it, change characteristics of matter, redirect the force vector, and so on. The train traffic on this railway system isn't quite usual for an observer on the space station. Each train on borders between dispatching areas passes a kind of invisible tunnel of zero thickness, something like a thin mist, a zoismic membrane. And for the observer from the space station, the train traffic on Earth when crossing the border of dispatching areas will look like continuous. Actually, each wagon of the train passing this line of demarcation between areas will disappear from one area and then reappear in another, in another azoismic cell. Sometimes the train can move quite unpredictably for the observer, akin to the effect of the instant teleportation. Leaving one area, it can disappear on its border and instantly appear in another area located thousands of kilometers from the initial one. And by the way, the control of the train can be managed by another driver with a different route. And the train, filled with new fuel, may move on new rails in another direction, new information, transporting in wagons a new cargo and so on. Moreover, if on the same dispatching area at the same time, two trains came around and there was their collision, two phantom Po particles in a zoismic cell under the influence of the own septum field of real Po particle have collided, then some component parts of these trains may disappear forever on the border of this area in a zoismic membrane, and others can emerge on other area in an absolutely different quality, in other conjunction with the other phantom Po particles, and to move in the new directions with the new cargo, modified inner potential, etc. And this process occurs instantaneously for the observer. Thus, in this rail network, it is possible to observe absolutely different cases which at first sight for the observer will appear chaotic and unclear. Although in fact, everything will exist according to a strictly defined program where a limited multivariability takes place. Please pay attention to a very important point. In the world of microcosm, everything depends on the information and on the energy obtained from an isosmic impetus that is during the process of isosmos. In microcosm, an amazing phenomenon occurs. The same elementary particle consisting of a bunch of phantom pole particles participates in different processes, but its inner potential can be changed depending on the processes in which it is involved at the present moment. Question. Where and how is this action accomplished at the level of isosmic grid? Let's get back to our associative example with the train and wagons. In the moment when the train wagons disappear on the border of areas, they experience a very important transformation. Imagine now that you are an observer who is near a railroad crossing on the border of two administrative areas. Moving at a small speed, the train with the covered wagons, which contain, for example, a grain, is approaching the level crossing. At the railroad crossing, the train passes through something like a thin mist or a short tunnel and comes out already at an absolutely other speed, conducted by another driver, 
and wagons are filled not with the grain, but with people. What has happened? If the observer had an opportunity to look inside the tunnel, a zoismic membrane, he would see the process unusual for his habitual world. Proceeding from our associative example, the wagon would stiffen in timelessness, and everything that was in it would either be completed or completely changed to another content. Change of inner potential, energy, and information. So, the train remained the same. For example, the electron is the same, but its content has changed. Inner potential of phantom Po particles. In other words, in this earthly associative example, the observer would see qualitatively different endless world in which the wagon stiffened in time was served as if at a freight station, a marshalling yard, where the unloading of the old cargo, loading of a new cargo in the wagon, replacement of the driver, refueling, registration of transportation documents, the new or corrected information, etc., would be made. Change of the inner potential of phantom pore particles is a unique phenomenon which adds a new quality to the quantum system of an elementary particle, consisting of a compound of phantom pore particles. Changes its inner state, sets a completely new program of action, the course of events, and so on. For example, let's consider the simplified scheme of a part of the life of electron which consists of 13 phantom Po particles. In the beginning, the given electron was, for example, in the atom of nitrogen, which in turn was a part of a soil fertilizer. Then, nitrogen got through a root system, for example, a wheat germ, and became a component of this plant included in a protein, more specifically in gluten. The wheat germ grew, became an ear, the grain-bearing tip, when the time has come, people have reaped the harvest, processed ears, grinded wheat grains into flour, kneaded dough and baked bread. That is, at first, the nitrogen of the gluten protein entered the chemical composition of the flour, then dough, then became a bread component. An individual ate the bread to replenish their energy reserves, to maintain the activity of the organism developing under its information program. Nitrogen, being in composition of protein of a gluten, being a bread component, came as a nutrient into the human body, where it again changed to an absolutely different chemical environment, where, under the influence of various forces of biochemical reactions, there was a transformation of a substance of which it was a part. Let's suppose that a protein which included this atom of nitrogen in its composition was not metabolized by the body. It was removed from the system already as a part of waste products of human vital activity, got back to the ground where it was a subject to other chemical reactions and influence of other forces. All this time, the electron of nitrogen remained the electron consisting of the same 13 phantom pore particles both in the ground and in grain, both as a part of flour and as a part of dough, both as a part of bread and in protein, being in the human body and then having got to the ground. The only thing that was changing in the electron is the inner potential of its phantom pore particles, that is their energy and information program. This clearly explains why the same elementary particle is present in the composition of various material objects, performing different functions, existing in different conditions. In our limited understanding of life, all these elementary particles are identical. Actually, their inner potential is absolutely different. The same electrons forming various micro-objects are identical in their composition, but have different potentials. Some electrons are a part of the alkali, others of the acids. Some participate in destruction of material objects, others in their creation. The ancients were right, saying that the material world is false and illusory because everything in it is only a redistribution of energy and information. The ancients were right, asserting that the sense of human life consists not in his corporeal existence, which is subject to death, but in the spiritual transformation, where the essence of everything is defined by his choice.
In the report, it has been interestingly described how the ancients had transferred the knowledge of isosmos process through clear associations. Let's examine this in more detail. Lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 1.3.28 In the Hindu mythology, the cosmic play of God, through which He creates the world, creates in it an illusion as a reality, as a performance or a dance, is called Lila. Sanskrit, play. Lila is an illusory appearance, semblance, affectation. The whole world, all its forms and the phenomena, the whole illusionary universe are actions of this fleeting play, quickly alternated forms. The swiftly flowing performance captures human attention. But it is no more than an illusion caused by ignorance. The true reality is hidden in man himself, but ability to see it is only given to the one who is able to see clearly and perceive the true reality, spiritual world, behind the playing inflections of illusion, maya, hiding behind a visible variety of the temporary world of matter, its real essence. In Hindu cosmologic myths, the god of cosmic play, vigorously dancing Shiva, is mentioned. One of three main Hindu deities, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, destroying and reviving all things. In a sacred dance, Tandava, with the help of magical power, Maya, Shiva creates the appearance of all creatures and things in the world is the source of the cycle, creation, preservation, dissolution. Translated from the Sanskrit Maya means elusiveness, and the word Tandava is derived from the Tamil Tandu, jump, intermittently jumping, dancing. Jumping means to move in different directions, moving quickly in the air, pushing off from the surface. The dance symbol in the mythology is considered as a movement of space energy, universe rhythms, transformation of space and time, imitation of the divine play of creation. One of the iconographic images of Shiva, popular in today's Indian culture, is a statue of Shiva Nataraja, dancing in the fiery ring, having raised his left foot. He treads with his other foot on a dwarf, Apasmara, symbolizing ignorance. The inferior human self, I, in which a person is so involved that he forgets about his higher spiritual calling and destiny. All actions take their place in time thanks to mutual interlacement of forces of nature, However, the person mired in the illusions of egoism thinks that he is a doer himself. However, the one who knows about the connection of forces of nature with actions sees how some forces of nature make an impact on other forces of nature and avoids the fate of their slave. Primordial Alatra Physics One of the prominent physicists of our time, after having acquainted himself with the Primordial Alatra Physics, said, This knowledge will take the modern physics out of lethargy. This is a radical revision 
of the established concepts and contemplations. All the complexity of physics turns into a brilliant simplicity when you realize that before, you were watching just a combination of double shadows and not the real essence of the process. As people say, the truth is always simple. Structure of elementary particles. Nature abounds with the diversity of its constituent particles. The knowledge of the primordial electrophysics allows one to look behind the secrecy curtain of the structure of the material world to learn about the origin of its primary interactions and processes. There is a chart known from ancient times that contains information about the quantitative composition of phantom Po particles in each particle which takes part in most common and significant processes in nature, connected with interaction of matter and its structure. It contains description of both the particles that we already know about, which were mentioned under the names and notions in ancient times, and particles which science does not know about yet. For example, a particle that is called proton in the modern world consists of 12 Po, 12 phantom Po particles. Electron consists of 13 Po, 13 phantom Po particles. Neutron consists of 33, 33 phantom Po particles. The chart also includes the unique particles having a complex internal structure, unknown till today to official science, consisting, for example, of 25 Po, 39 Po, 47 Po, 60 Po, and also 72 Po. The knowledge of the quantitative structure of phantom Po particles, which constitute one or another elementary particle, opens great possibilities for the human civilization. For example, they allow to calculate with absolute accuracy any reaction under any conditions of its process. To compute the formula of the composition of any matter, of any living and non-living object, and so on. Taking into account that the present report is intended for the initial acquaintance of the participants from different countries of the International Public Movement Alatra with primordial Alatra physics, we will present examples that are the most easily understood. In particular, we will familiarize the reader with the information that is unknown today to the official science, the unique phantom Po particle that constitutes the basis of any force particle which forms the core of the force interaction, a lat phantom particle. And, as an example, we will provide a brief description of the structure of several already discovered and the most mysterious elementary particles, photon, neutrino, electron, which have a lat phantom particle in their composition. We will provide simple examples of calculation of the number of phantom Po particles in the nuclei of atoms and verification of nuclear reaction formulas Knowing the calculation scheme, it can be successfully replicated even by schoolchildren. Undoubtedly, there are other more complex calculations of the energy yield of nuclear reactions with the release or absorption of energy and so on, but they are of interest only to the narrow circle of specialists. Understanding the fundamentals, it is not difficult for any qualified expert to grasp the essence of this process by themselves and understand much more than is set out publicly.
The prevailing perception today is that in ancient times there lived hunters and gatherers who had allegedly primitive considerations about the material world and its structure. The inconvenient facts that do not fit into the theory for the slaves of the system and confirm the existence of previous civilizations that were far ahead of modern humanity in their development. This affects the minds of most people, so that they wouldn't ask unwanted questions, wouldn't think about the meaning of their existence, about their own spiritual transformation and the change of the entire civilization. There are lots of artifacts proving the fact that in ancient times, before our civilization, there were more technologically advanced human civilizations. And with every year, this collection of facts which are unfavorable for the system is being enlarged with new discoveries and findings from different corners of the world. For example, today we have an irrefutable tangible evidence proving that 140 million years ago there was a highly advanced civilization. The remainders of the previous scientific heritage of early advanced civilizations can be traced back even by the most famous pages of the recent past, the civilizations of ancient Egypt, Zuma, India. It will suffice to study the question of numbers and calculations they used, and what tables, equipment and technologies they had. Will these facts change the fate of the today's system of consumer society, which is already on the verge of a disaster? Dear viewers, everything depends on our choice. If people start to wake up spiritually and, with the help of their deeds, day by day change themselves and the surrounding world to the direction of spiritual and moral development of the society, then everything will change. We have all the knowledge and opportunities for that. Primordial Alatra Physics Alat Alat is the smallest in size and the most unique in its functions phantom pore particle. Being a part of an elementary particle plays an important role of a power particle and the universal connecting link between phantom pore particles, which have incompatible inner potential and cannot be located near each other in the structure of the elementary particle. It exists only if it is bonded to other phantom pole particles. As it was mentioned before, phantom pole particles do not exist separately. If, in the process of elementary particle decay, one phantom pole particle separates, then it disappears in isosmic membrane irretrievably. It is thanks to its universal character and exclusiveness, due to its nature, that this pole particle was called a lot phantom pole particle, or in short, a lot. An interesting question arises. Why are the two phantom pore particles with incompatible inner potentials allocated in the structure of one elementary particle and are connected to each other by an allot phantom pore particle? It is important to point out that this report does not have the goal to fully describe the characteristics of a large phantom pore particle and its influence on other pore particles. Only a general description of these processes and interactions has been given although this subject is quite interesting for future research. It is unique, 
power of phantom Po particle. It is the only phantom Po particle from which the real stationary Po particle cannot withdraw energy and information. Going through an isosmic cell, Alat phantom Po particle, figuratively speaking, has the immunity status, associative example of diplomatic carriage. It is the presence of Alat phantom Po particle in their structure that makes such particles as, for example, photon, 3 Po, neutrino, 5 Po, and electron, 13 Po, unique. Even an elementary particle contains an unlocked phantom Po particle. This means that this elementary particle takes part in power processes and interactions, exhibiting specific features and properties. Thanks to its universal force of Allat, as people said in ancient times, which is inherent to the spiritual world, and thanks to its unique function to link unlinkable, Alat Phantom Po particle was denoted by the ancient Slavonic letter A. The name of this letter in the Old Slavonic language, Az. This is also the Old Slavonic name for unit, which is connected with the usage of Cyrillic letters to denote numbers. There is an Old Slavonic phrase, Az Yezum, I am. This was done for two reasons. First, using the background of the already known values and notions in physics, denoted with Latin and Greek alphabets, we show the unique and exclusive character of a large phantom Po particle itself and many of its peculiarities. And second, for historical reasons, taking into account the fact that the fundamentals of the primordial electrophysics, lost in time by humanity as basics of science, have been revived and restored on Slavic territories in the present-day world. There is no elementary particle which consists of one or two phantom pole particles. The world of elementary particles, which make up all matter, begins with a bond of three or more phantom pole particles. This knowledge can be found in many ancient cultural traditions of nations of the world. For example, the numbers one and two were not considered to be numbers at all. And the first number in many traditions is considered to be three. The very notion Alat is quite ancient. In the past, the Alat sign in the form of a half moon with its horns up was used to indicate the presence of the divine force in this or that phenomena, object, and so on. Alat also denotes a common unit, the forerunner of time. Alat has multiple manifestations. In scientific understanding, 
A lot is a single unit of time, which has a great importance for all matter. If we take modern indication of earthly time, a lot makes up 12 minutes, more precisely, 11 minutes, 56.74 seconds. When scientists get to the notion of this important particle of foundation, so to say, the main building block of the universe, there will be not just a grand revolution in science, there will be an evolutionary jump. Then scientists will understand what is hidden under the secret of time, and having realized that they will reveal the true process of matter formation in the universe. If people know the essence of Alat, they will get huge opportunities. The symbolism of the number one was a reflection of the ancient knowledge of Alat Phantom Po particle. In the most ancient texts, as a rule, the semantic meaning of the number one is found very rarely. The number one denoted not as much the first element in a row as such, but rather the perfect integrity of the spiritual world, the supreme God thanks to whom this world emerged. It was interpreted as a beginning, initial cause, initial impetus, indivisible, foundation of life. The symbolic meaning of the number two was connected with the ancient echoes of the knowledge of phantom and real Po particles, which are the basis of interactions in isosmic grid. The number two was interpreted as the basis of binary oppositions with the help of which people describe the world, the vision of unity, distorted reflection of unity, using the example of a candle reflected in two opposite mirrors. And it was mentioned that nothing has a real existence outside the unity. The number two was interpreted as difference, dependence, appeal of illusion, formation of pairs of opposites, the Vedic tradition has such a correlation of one and two, where two, on the one hand, is a symbol of opposition, division, and connection, and on the other hand, a symbol of conformity or homology of opposed members. Ancient Greek philosopher Plato mentioned that the number two is a number without meaning, because it implies a relation which brings the third factor. The first number in a great number of traditions of nations of the world was considered to be free. It opened a numerical series and was interpreted as a perfect number, dynamic unity, accumulated action, universal character of power, multiplicity, creation, movement ahead, aggregation, external expression, the origin of all the things, and so on. It was the main constant of mythopoetical macrocosm and social organization. Free highest values, free presiding deities, free times people repeat some action during rituals, and so on. The bond of free phantom Po particles will be the next topic in this report. A lot is actually a unique power phantom pole particle. As they say, when people know the essence of a lot, then vast opportunities will open up to them. And if you, dear viewers, are truly interested in looking into these questions, in knowing more about the nature of this unique phantom pole particle, then it will be much easier, faster and more fun to do it by joining our efforts. Primordial Alatra Physics Photon
Since the ancient times, the phenomena of the reflection and refraction of light have been known. Until now, the essence of these phenomena and their true nature are not obvious to the official science. Everything is based on theory of probability. Primordial electrophysics is really the most harmonious theory hypothesis as of today, because it allows to learn the nature of photon and to answer many questions of this most common elementary particle in the universe. Let's study this most fascinating subject together. In scientific literature of today, photon is the quantum of an electromagnetic field, which is seen to be a carrier of electromagnetic interaction. However, in fact, the modern name photon only implies the observed process. The lowest portions, beams of light, constituting the waves of electromagnetic radiation, including the visible light, radio waves, X-rays, laser pulses, and so on. The notion of a photon was introduced in 1926 by the American chemist Gilbert Newton Lewis. In the scientific article in 1926, Gilbert Lewis writes, I am putting forth a hypothesis that we are dealing here with a new type of atom, an identifiable entity, uncreatable and indestructible, which acts as a carrier of radiance energy and, after absorption, persists as an essential constituent of the absorbing atom until it is later sent out again bearing a new amount of energy. I therefore take the liberty of proposing for this hypothetical new atom, which is not light, but plays an essential part in every process of radiation, the name photon. An interesting fact is that Gilbert Lewis considered a photon to be the carrier of emitting energy, that is radiation, but not the energy itself. Nowadays, physicists considered the photon to be the carrier of electromagnetic force. Since that time, the word photon quickly came into general use. Today, the photon is denoted in physics by a symbol of the Greek letter gamma. Such a denotation is connected with the discovery of the gamma radiation in 1900 consisting of high-energy photons. It was discovered by a French physicist, Paul Villard, in the course of research of radium emitting in the strong magnetic field. Subsequently, an English physicist, Ernest Rutherford, named this type of radiation as gamma rays. The discovery of photon considerably stimulated the development of theoretical and experimental physics, including physical chemistry, quantum mechanics, and so on. People began to understand, to some extent, and use the manifestations of such physical phenomena as electricity, stream of photons, etc. However, the knowledge about the smallest structure of these phenomena is approximate as the official science still can't explain what exactly electron or photon itself consists of. Although this knowledge of a true nature of microcosm was available in high antiquity. But even relying on the research results that were obtained by the process of observation, the discoveries were made that found a wide application in life of society. Various technical devices have been invented, the main functioning of which is connected with the use of photons. For example, computer tomography, quantum generator, maser, laser, and so on. The laser has a wide practical application in industry, medicine, everyday life, starting from the creation of physical devices of high precision as seismographs, gravimeters, laser scalpels employed in microsurgery, including the development of technological processes of welding, cutting of metals, household laser printers, and so on. Photons are also used in the spectroanalysis, the nuclear spectroscopy studies the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation of atoms. Due to the studies of photons, scientists found out that atoms of each chemical element have strictly defined resonant frequencies. They emit and absorb the light photons exactly within the limits of these frequencies. That is, just as each person has the individual fingerprints, so as each chemical element has its unique spectrum of radiation and absorption. All of these facts constitute only the beginning of the study of such a unique structure as photon that is actively involved in various power processes and interactions in nature. All 
the theoretical physics of the elementary particles is based on the theory of probability. As one of the founders of quantum electrodynamics, the American scientist Richard Feynman said, his quotation is cited in the report. Try as we might to invent a reasonable theory that can explain how a photon makes up its mind, whether to go through glass or bounce back, it is impossible to predict which way a given photon will go. Here is a circumstance. Identical photons are always coming down in the same direction to the same piece of glass. That produces different results. We cannot predict whether a given photon will arrive at A or B. All we can predict is that out of 100 photons that come down, an average of four will be rejected by the front surface. Does this mean that physics, a science of great exactitude, has been reduced to calculating only the probability of an event and not predicting exactly what will happen? Yes. By the way, the mentioned photons problem is still an unresolved issue only for the official science. As for the scientists of Alatra Science Group, this question was solved long time ago. But what is, in fact, a photon and an electron? What do these structures consist of? By what type of its constituent the photon is stable and participates in power interactions? Why does this so-called massless elementary particle in modern physics have no electric charge? Why photon is one of the smallest and the most widespread elementary particles in the universe? Nowadays, the official science cannot answer these questions, because photons still, despite the accumulated experimental material, remains still a mysterious elementary particle. But this situation is easy to rectify, possessing the knowledge about the foundations of the primordial Alatra physics, even a schoolboy is able to find answers to these questions. In fact, photon, if considered as a genuine elementary particle, consists of phantom poor particles. A photon can exist in two states, the photon 3 and the photon 4. Most of the photons consist of three phantom poor particles. However, under certain conditions, each of these photons can transform itself into the photon 4. And then the photon 4 can transform itself into photon 3. Depending on its state, photon can perform the functions either of power particle photon 3 or the information particle photon 4. In the latter case, it acts as a carrier of the information about the elementary particle with which it interacts. It is noteworthy that Photon, moving in the Zoos Macrid, has more accelerated spiral rotation of its phantom poor particles than that of the phantom poor particles of many other elementary particles. Due to such accelerated whirls of Photon structure, the speed of its movement is higher in comparison with the speed of many other elementary particles. Photon 3 and Photon 4 usually move in one energy stream, and it is noteworthy that the amount of Photon 3 is always many times higher than that of Photon 4. For example, the Sun generates a stream of photons, where most of them are power photons, Photon 3, that are responsible for energy and power interactions. However, there are also information photons, Photon 4 among them, carrying information about the Sun. The streams of photons 3 do not carry heat, they generate it by destructing the particles they hit on the way. The greater is the flux of photons 3, which are directed at a right angle to a material object, the more heat is generated. So, due to photons 3, the energy stream is provided, as well as various power interactions in the material world. A human being, for example, feels the heat from the sun and so on.
And due to the Foden's fall, the delivery of information is effectuated in this particular energy stream, that is, participation in the processes, making, for example, a human being capable of seeing the sunlight, the sun itself, and the surrounding world. Photon 3 consists of three phantom Po particles, namely of two phantom Po particles which are connected to each other by a lat phantom Po particle. It is important to point out that a lat phantom Po particle will never be in the place of the first head phantom Po particle in any elementary particle which has it in its composition. A lat phantom Po particle is always located inside the elementary particle between phantom Po particles as the power base of a given particle. Exactly the inclusion of a lat phantom Po particle in the composition of photon makes it unique, stable, and active participant in power interactions. Photon 3 can transform itself into photon 4, and the photon 4 can transform itself into the state of photon 3. How does this process work? The photon, namely photon 3 and photon 4, has a unique structure that distinguishes it from any other elementary particle. In particular, it has an unusual first head phantom Po particle. If the appropriate conditions arise in the azoismic cell that two head phantom Po particles enter it simultaneously from two opposite directions, one of which belongs to a photon and the other one to another elementary particle, and they converge to a maximum extent, the following process takes place. The head phantom Po particle of the photon, due to its high speed in reference to the speed of head phantom Po particle of another elementary particle, rapidly rotates. Thus, it enables the power particle of a photon, a lat phantom Po particle, running behind it, to capture from the oncoming elementary particle its head phantom Po particle which is the bearer of all the information about this particular elementary particle. Photon 3, capturing the head phantom Po particle of another elementary particle, appends this information particle to its structure. As a result, Photon 3 is converted into Photon 4, consisting of four phantom Po particles. Hereby, that elementary particle from which the head phantom Po particle was withdrawn undergoes a destruction, as a result of which the energy is released. In general, such a process of seizing the information by the photon occurs only in the case if exactly the head phantom Po particle of elementary particle passes through the isosmic cell and not other phantom Po particles that comprise the elementary particle. When photon 3 knocks the head phantom Po particle out of the elementary particle, it turns from invader into transporter, namely a carrier of information, photon 4. Photon 4 consists of four phantom Po particles, a unique head phantom Po particle, a borrowed head phantom Po particle, information particle, an allowed phantom Po particle, and a closing phantom Po particle. Namely, the inclusion of this borrowed head phantom Po particle in the composition of the photon 4 makes its content full of information, that is, carrying information about this borrowed elementary particle. In general, when there is a plenty of such photons, they carry the information about a particular subject, object, phenomenon, and so on. Photon exists in this particular state, photon 4, until similar conditions arise in a zoismic cell again, when it is released from the borrowed head phantom Po particle. That is, the process of information reset occurs. Thus, the head phantom Po particle rotates again, 
and due to participation of the Alat power Po particle in this process, extrusion of the borrowed head phantom Po particle within the limits of the own septum field of the oncoming head phantom Po particle of the elementary particle takes place. The photon itself, having undergone the transformation into a state of the photon 3, leaves the azoismic cell. The released head phantom Po particle discards information into the own septum field of the real Po particle and into the septum field of the passing head phantom Po particle of the elementary particle, thus enriching their inner potential with the new information and irretrievably goes into the azoismic membrane. After the release of the informational borrowed head phantom Po particle, Photon 4 again transforms into Photon 3. Meaning, it returns to its initial state, where multivariability of various actions is inherent to it. For example, Photon 3 can take part in other interactions, make up the elementary particles and so on. It can disappear due to a zoismic membrane in one place and appear in another place. That is, move in a zoismic grid at the long space distances almost instantly. This is certainly just concise information about the photon, intended for the initial acquaintance. Besides, there is a lot of unique information, obtained in the course of research, on regularities and paradoxes of photon behavior patterns in different environments, peculiarities of its wave properties, interactions with other elementary particles, algorithms of control of the photon behavior, and much more. One of the key philosophical texts of Taoism, called Liu Zi, 1 to 3 CCAD, has the following lines about the Absolute. How the world which received its name comes from unnamed Absolute Unity. In the beginning, there was the great simplicity. Then, the great origin appeared. Then, the great basis appeared. And after the great substantiality appeared, there was still no breath in the great simplicity. Great origin was the beginning of breath. Great basis was the beginning of all material forms. The great substantiality was the beginning of all things. Breath, form and substance were still not separated from one another, that is called chaos. Look inside and you will not see. Listen to it and you will not hear. Its name is simplicity. The simple has no form, no limits. Having undergone a transformation, it becomes one. And from one, it becomes seven. And seven was transformed into nine. Here all transformations end and come again to one. And this one is the beginning of transformation of all forms. The pure and subtle went up and formed the sky. The dirty and heavy went down and formed the earth. And breath, having pervaded the first and the second, gave birth to a human being. Thus the sky and the earth embraced the seed of all living things, and everything came to life. There are the following lines in the ancient Chinese text, Tao Te Ching, chapter 42. Tao gave birth to one, one gave birth to two, two gave birth to three, and three gave birth to all things. Every substance carries the yin and embraces the yang. In 
general, summing up the above information, it can be said that the main function of Photon 3 is the energy interactions that are mainly related to the process of destruction of the matter and the release of energy. And the main function of Photon 4 is information interactions that are related to the transfer of information. Possessing the knowledge about the functions and peculiarities of Photon, the principles of its interaction with other elementary particles, and especially with the septon field, it is possible to understand many of the processes of macro and micro world in which it is directly involved. Due to this knowledge, it is possible to find answers to many questions. For example, how does a human being actually perceive visual information? What is really a shadow? heat or cold, if to view these processes at the level of azoismic grid, as a result of what underlying reasons the destruction of matter that is under a long-term influence of sunlight occurs? What are the peculiarities of photon connection with the gravitational and electromagnetic field, and much more? The knowledge about photon assists in understanding of this or that action that is performed due to involvement of the photon in it. and allows conducting more accurate calculations of photon interactions without using the expensive equipment and machinery. Primordial Alatra Physics Neutrino. In the modern physics, this elementary particle is called neutrino. Officially, the hypothetical existence of this particle was proposed by Wolfgang Pauli in 1930. The scientist, trying to explain the apparent violation of the laws of conservation of energy and momentum of quantity notions in the process of beta disintegration of atomic nuclei as the last resort, put forward the hypothesis of the existence of a kind of weakly interacting particle in order to explain this process. Based on this hypothesis, a prominent Italian physicist, Enrico Fermi, developed a theory of beta disintegration, the essence of which was that the elementary particle that is still unknown to the science is emitted during the beta disintegration, in addition to electron. He gave name to this particle, neutrino. It appeared feasible to confirm the existence of neutrino through the experiments only in 1956. Neutrino was called an illusory particle, and this is not surprising. Today, the official science knows not so much about this unique particle, as well as what it really represents. It is believed that neutrino is extremely difficult to detect, and in order to do this, the creation of appropriate conditions and the particular equipment, expensive materials, etc. are required. It is known that neutrinos are formed and destroyed as a result of particles' disintegration in which the weak nuclear force is involved. Neutrinos interact very weakly with the substance and have a high penetrating capability. It is believed that this particle is emitted during the transformation of atomic nuclei and the disintegration of elementary particles in the bowels of the Earth and its atmosphere, inside the Sun, in other stars, and so on. In laboratory conditions, the nuclear reactors and accelerators of the charged particles are the sources of neutrino. According to scientists' assumptions, a powerful stream of neutrino permeates the entire cosmos. About 100 million of these particles pass through every person every second. Today, neutrino is considered to be a perspective tool for the study of cosmic objects, including the Earth, the Sun, and as an opportunity of obtaining accurate and timely information, which has been successfully confirmed by the scientists of Alatra Science Group. In fact, neutrino is like photon one of the smallest and the most common elementary particles in the universe. 
neutrino consists of five phantom Po particles, where two phantom Po particles are connected via a lat phantom Po particle with two other phantom Po particles. The following facts related to a power particle are large phantom power particle. As we know, as part of the Putin 3, a large phantom power particle connects one phantom power particle with another one. And because of this, elementary particle exhibits a more rough power interaction in the material world. As a part of the neutrino, a large phantom power particle connects two phantom power particles with another two. And because of it, this elementary particle exhibits a more subtle interaction in the material world. Neutrino is a unique elementary particle. Let's look at this most fascinating information that is provided in the book by Anastasia Novich Isosmos. Neutrino may either have or not have a mass. It may or may not interact with gravitational field, with magnetic or electromagnetic fields. Furthermore, neutrino is capable of moving at the velocity of light, but unlike light, it can slow down and change its trajectory. Yet perhaps the most fantastical for modern science neutrino's talent is its ability to move at unlimited distances instantly. A distinctive feature of neutrino is its all-persuasive effect due to its very weak interaction with the matter. Its main function is to transfer internal information about the objects. However, unlike the photon, it does not destroy the elementary particles which the object comprises. Passing through the object, the neutrino only reads information from the head phantom Po particles of elementary particles that make up some particular object, just like a real Po particle does. Thus, the neutrino stream becomes a carrier of information about the internal structure and the state of objects and phenomena, unlike the streams of photons, which mainly carry the information about the external state of objects or events. Neutrino carries information about the inner structure and state of the matter from which it is released. That is, it withdraws from the composition of complex elementary particles and it partly carries the information about the matter through which it passes. In the latter case, the neutrino exchanges information with the head phantom pore particles of the elementary particles, which constitute the object. Neutrino can exist in several states, but unlike photons, it will not change quantitative composition of phantom Po particles. It will always be permanent. Five phantom Po particles. It is important to point out another unique quality of neutrino. While interacting with the gravity field, neutrino passes from one state into another. Let's say from the state of particle into the state of energy with a narrowly defined frequency, at the same time exciting the gravity field, for example, at a defined point of our solar system, which causes a responding excitation at a defined point of gravity field in another galaxy. Hence, without any loss of time and regardless of space, neutrino disappears here and now and appears there and now. As physicists say, it forms a wormhole in time and space. The neutrino can transform itself from one state to another, depending on whether it is in the composition of complex elementary particles or exists by itself. In the latter case, different states are also inherited, based on whether it is currently the information carrier or does not bear the information about other objects. If currently neutrino is a carrier of information, it is possible to detect and record this particle in third dimension.
Neutrino is a special elementary particle. Due to its all-persuasive character, streams of neutrino permeate the Earth, the Sun, cosmic space, other space objects, and other carriers of the unique information about the state of these objects. Recent studies in the field of physics of elementary particles, neutrino geophysics and neutrino astrophysics, conducted by the Working Group of Scientists of Alatra International Public Movement, reveals more opportunities for prospective basic and applied research. During the study, the important influence of cosmic factors on the activation of the internal dynamics of the Earth was detected. Due to the knowledge of the primordial Alatra physics, the opportunity arose not only to fundamentally examine the behavior of neutrinos emanating from the bowels of the Earth and the Earth's own septum field to calculate certain correlations, but also to elaborate new methods for the forecasting of volcanic eruptions to conduct a more detailed study of modern magmatic formations of geodynamic conditions. Moreover, an opportunity arose to have a direct impact on these processes by means of climate and volcanic geoengineering. Thanks to the primordial electrophysics, it can be confidently proclaimed today that it is quite feasible to control the natural processes. For more details, see the report on the problems and consequences of global climate change on Earth. Effective ways to solve these problems. Interestingly, while we talked about neutrino, trillions of neutrinos passed or rather flew through our bodies. And you didn't even feel them. Let's supplement the information about neutrino with some interesting facts that are provided in the book Isosmos by Anastasia Novich. Neutrino plays a stupendous role in the formation of the world which you see around you. And, by the way, it has the same whole time unit as a lot. That is 11 minutes 56.74 seconds. It has a shape of a regular five-point star. By the way, inasmuch as a lot manifests itself a great extent through neutrino, it has often been depicted as a five-point star, bearing double sense as a symbol of the female nature and of a lot as such, although these two are pretty much the same thing. Primordial Alatra Physics Electron. Electron was the first discovered elementary particle in physics by an English physicist Joseph Thomson in 1897. Despite this fact, the nature of electron remains mysterious to the scientists. The theory of electron is considered to be incomplete because the inner logical contradictions are inherent to it and there are many questions to which the official science has no answers yet. The name of this elementary particle was suggested in 1891 by Irish physicist George Stoney as the fundamental unit of electricity measurement. The word electron comes from the Greek word electron, that means amber. As it was known, the amber is a hardened fossilized resin. By friction, amber acquires an electric charge and attracts the light bodies. This characteristic of amber has been known since ancient times to different peoples. The scientists have decided among themselves to consider the electric charge of the electron to be a negative one, in accordance with an earlier agreement to recognize the charge of the electrified amber as a negative one. Electron is a constituent of the atom, one of the main structural elements of substance. The electrons form the electron shells of atoms of all currently non-chemical elements. They are involved in almost all electrical phenomena, which are now known to the scientists. But what is electricity in actual fact? 
the official science still cannot explain it. Resorting to common phrases that it is, for example, a set of phenomena caused by existence, movement and direction of charged bodies, or particles, carriers of electric charge. It is known that electricity is not a continuous stream, but is transformed in portions, discreetly. Almost all the main data about electron, which science operates with until now, had been acquired at the turn of the end of the 19th and early 20th centuries. In particular, this concerns the idea of the wave nature of the electron. It is enough to recall the work of Nikola Tesla and his study on the generation and wireless transmission of energy at a distance. However, according to the official history of physics, the idea of the wave nature of the electron was put forward in 1924 by the French physicist theorist, one of the founders of quantum mechanics, Louis de Broglie. The idea was experimentally confirmed in 1927 by American scientists Clinton Davison and Lester Germer during the examination of electron diffraction. Diffraction is the phenomenon of wave dissemination, for example, of a light beam when passing through a narrow hole or when in contact with the edge of an obstacle. The idea of a wave nature of the electron constituted the basis for the development of wave mechanics by an Austrian theoretical physicist, Erwin Schrödinger, in 1926. Since then, the official science is only making a slight progress in the study on the nature of the electron. In fact, electron consists of 13 quantum pole particles and has a unique structure. The detailed knowledge about the electron is omitted on purpose because this information is presented publicly and that knowledge can be dangerous if it gets into the hands of people who want to create a new type of weapon. We note only that electron has unusual properties. What is known today under the name of electricity is in fact a particular condition of the septal field in the processes where electron is involved along with its other additional components in most cases. Interesting information indicating the uniqueness of electron was presented in the book Alatra on page 169. Anastasia, how can the observer make changes with an act of observation? Rigdon, to make an answer to this question clear, let's take a journey into quantum physics. The more scientists study questions posed by this science, the more they come to the conclusion that everything is very closely interconnected in the world and exists non-locally. Those same elementary particles are interconnected with each other. According to the theory of quantum physics, if a simultaneous formation of two particles takes place, they will not only be in the superposition state, that is, in many places at the same time, a change of the state of one particle will also lead to an instant change in the state of another particle, no matter how far it is located from it. Even if this distance exceeds the range of action of all the natural forces known to modern humankind. Anastasia, what is the secret of this instant interconnection? Rigdon, I shall explain in a moment. Let us, for instance, take a look at the electron. It consists of information building blocks, or pograins, as they were called by the ancient people, which define its basic characteristics and determine its inner potential, amongst other things. According to modern concepts, the electron moves around the nucleus of an atom as if along a stationary orbit, orbital. To be more specific, its motion is already presented not in the form of a material point or a predetermined path, but in the form of an electron cloud, a conventional image of the electron smeared throughout the whole volume of the atom, which has areas of thickening and discharge of the electric charge. The electron cloud as such has no clear boundaries. The orbit, orbital, 
is referred to not as a movement of the electron in a particular line, but as a certain part of space, an area, around the nucleus of the atom, which is the most likely location of the electron in the atom, atomic orbital, or in the molecule, molecular orbital. It is the difference between the inner potential and the external charge that creates such orbitals. Interesting information related to the orbitals is presented in the book Isosmos by Anastasia Novich. It is the difference in internal potential and external charge that creates stationary orbits, both for planets around the Sun and electrons around the nucleus. Otherwise, the orbits would stick together or scatter and would never have stationary orbits. Since external charge fluctuates and is not stable in contrast to internal potential, an external charge cannot create stationary orbits without involvement of a stable internal potential. All material objects have internal potential, starting from a quark right up to stars, otherwise they would not be material. The quality of internal energy is precisely what characterizes a material object. For instance, if we purely hypothetically take a planet and a star of the same mass and destroy, say, tear them both, the planet would discharge a little quantity of destructive energy, while the star would discharge an enormous one compared to the planet. We'll get a similar result if we tear an electron and a positron. An atomic bomb would probably be the best example for you to understand. Such bomb generates an explosion of a tremendous power from just a small quantity of substance. In other words, the negative potential of an atom is being released. So, in conclusion, I would like to mention that the Danish physicist Bohr was partly right, but partly only in respect of stationary orbits of electrons. Yet he was mistaken in many aspects of the topic. A charged electron loses energy, but restores its internal potential owing to azoismos. Let us repeat that it is the difference between the inner potential and the external charge that creates atomic and molecular orbitals. The quality of the inner energy, potential, characterizes a material object. In other words, using the language of modern science, such electron shells, orbitals of atoms, determine electrical, optical, magnetic, and chemical properties of atoms and molecules, as well as most of the properties of solid bodies, depending on the number and position of electrons on them. The shape of the electron cloud, as we remember from chemistry classes at school, can be different. So, as it is known, the electron can exist in two states simultaneously in the material world, as a particle and as a wave. It can manifest itself in different places at the same time, according again to quantum physics, Leaving, or rather disappearing from its nuclear orbit, the electron moves instantly, that is, it disappears here and appears on another orbit. But the most interesting thing here is what scientists do not yet know. Consider, for example, an electron of the hydrogen atom, which is an element that is a part of water, living organisms and natural resources. It is also one of the most common elements in space. The atomic orbital that surrounds the nucleus of the hydrogen atom is spherically shaped. This is what the present-day science can detect. But scientists do not yet know that the electron itself is twisted into a helix, spiral. Moreover, depending on the charge location, this helix, one and the same, can be both left-handed and right-handed, depending on the location of charge in it. It is thanks to this spiral shape and the change of location of charge concentration that this electron goes easily from the particle state to a wave and vice versa. Here is a figurative example. Imagine that you have an orange in your hands. Using a knife, you carefully remove the whole peel from it in a circle, like a spiral, moving from one of its vertices, let's say, conventionally, from point A to another. Point B. If you separate this peel from the orange, then in the usual folded state, it will be a spherical shape, echoing contours of the orange. If stretched, 
it will be similar to a wave-like rope. So, in our figurative example, the orange pill will represent the electron helix, on the surface of which there is an external charge in the area of point A, while the internal charge is in the area of point B on the inside, on the white side of the peel. Any external change in point A on the orange side of the peel will lead to the same instant internal change, but which will be opposite in the power and influence in the points located on the white side of the peel under point B. As soon as the external electron charge decreases, the helix becomes stretched under the influence of the internal potential, and the electron goes into the wave state. When the external charge reappears, which is formed due to an interaction of waves with matter, the helix compresses and the electron goes into particle state again. In the particle state, the electron has a negative external charge and a left-handed helix. And in the wave state, it has a right-handed helix and a positive external charge. All this transformation happens due to azoismos. The observer from the perspective of three-dimensional world can see the electron as a particle, if certain technical conditions are created. But the observer from the perspective of higher dimensions, who will see our material world in the form of energies, will be able to observe another structure of electron, in particular the information building blocks that make up that electron, will only show the properties of energy waves of a stretched helix. Besides, this wave will be infinite in space. Put simply, the position of the electron is such in the overall system of reality that it will be located everywhere in the material world. Anastasia, could you say that it will exist regardless of whether we see it as observers of three-dimensional world or not? Rigdon, yes. In order to understand this, Let's consider another example with a mirror. Suppose that several basic information building blocks form a structure that represents a local point, some object. We put it in the middle of a room in which a multitude of mirrors is placed under a certain angle in such a way that it is reflected in each of them. So the object is in the middle of the room and it is reflected in every mirror. Also, we see it and therefore Information about it exists in our minds. In short, the information about the object exists simultaneously in several places. If we remove one of the mirrors, we will not observe this object in that place. But when we return the mirror, it will reappear. So, in fact, information about it has not disappeared. It is just that we see the object under certain conditions of manifestations of information. And once conditions have changed, we no longer see it. Objectively, however, this object continues to exist in that place in terms of information. The reflection may have a continuous flow, so it means that this object exists in each point of this room and, incidentally, not only of the room, but also of the space outside the limits of the room, regardless of whether we see it or not. According to quantum physics, the existence of the electron in the particle state depends on the very act of measurement or observation. In other words, the electron that has not been measured and that is not being observed behaves not as a particle, but as a wave. In this case, there is a whole probability field for it as it exists here and now in many places simultaneously, that is, in the superposition state. At that, despite the fact that the electron has multiple positions, it will be one and the same electron and the same wave. Superposition is the ability to simultaneously exist in all the possible alternative states until a choice is made, until the observer makes a measurement a calculation of the given object. As soon as the observer, 
focuses his or her attention on the behavior of the electron, the electron immediately collapses into a particle, that is, it transforms from a wave into a material object, the position of which can be easily localized. In short, after the measurement, so to say after the choice of the observer, only one object will exist in only one place. That is very interesting information. As it turns out, the findings of quantum physics are valuable for those who are engaged in self-perfection. For more details, refer to the book by Anastasia Novich, Alatra. So, regarding the quantum physics. On the one hand, the notion of the observer has expanded the boundaries of scientific knowledge. But on the other, it has brought them to a deadlock. After all, the perspective of the super-observer proves that a tremendous force exists, which can influence from the outside the universe, all its objects and all the processes taking place in it. This is, in fact, another way to prove the existence of God scientifically. Primordial Alatra Physics Verification of known formulas and reactions Due to the knowledge of the primordial Alatra physics, it is possible today to verify different reactions and formulas by the easy and available means without resorting to ghostly experiments, basically the same way as these calculations were conducted in ancient times. Having this information, it is possible to compute any reaction, for example of the nuclear disintegration or fusion, to identify inconsistencies and find the right solution. A nuclear reaction is a process during which atomic nuclei undergo transformation as a result of their interaction with elementary particles, nuclei of other atoms. In the present case, under the name of atom, the smallest part of the electrical element is meant. On Earth, the nuclear reactions often take place in the atmosphere and the lithosphere due to cosmic radiation and the activity of the nuclear active particles in the upper spheres of the Earth, the thermosphere and the exosphere. Today's artificial nuclear reactions that are carried out by a person are conducted using special equipment. For example, some facilities, for instance the particle accelerators, allow a so-called hitting of the nuclei of some elements by the nuclei of other elements or by rapid elementary particles. In this way, changes that take place in the nuclei are identified in elementary particles that are produced following this process. The results of nuclear transformations are recorded in special formulas that denote the nuclei of atoms which were involved in a reaction and which nuclei were produced as a result of it. Let us give an understandable and clear example of such calculation using the knowledge of quantitative composition of phantom pore particles in the elementary particles known today. Let's make a little journey into the basics of modern nuclear physics. Modern science aims to explore in greater depth the nature of the structure of atomic nucleus. Since the beginning of development of nuclear physics, we got a lot of indirect evidence of complex structure of atomic nucleus. The nucleus of the atom turned out to be strong enough well protected against external influences. The pressure up to the thousands of atmospheres, heating to several thousand degrees, electric discharge at voltages in the tens of hundreds of thousands of volts, visible and X-rays radiation, all of this and much more were insufficient to affect the nucleus. In order to understand the structure of the nucleus, so to say, to look inside the atom, it was necessary to apply more effective methods of stronger effect. 
A solution was found by heating the atomic nucleus with alpha particles. Alpha particle is a positively charged particle, which is formed by two protons and two neutrons. That is by the nucleus of helium-4. According to the official history of physics, the first artificial nuclear reaction, artificial transformation of nuclei, was performed in 1919 by a British physicist Ernest Rutherford during the heating of nitrogen nuclei with alpha particles. As a result of the particle collision, the nuclear reaction took place as follows. Using the example of this reaction, further we will view the process of detailed calculation of the amount of the phantom Po particles in the nuclei of atoms. By such a simple computation, it is also possible to accurately verify the results of any nuclear reaction and to calculate in a whole the outcome of any nuclear transformations. According to the modern concepts, the atom consists of a nucleus and electrons that surround it. The nucleus of the atom in its turn consists of a certain number of protons and neutrons, which are commonly referred to as nucleons. Nucleons are interconnected by nuclear forces. The number of protons in the nucleus determines the structure of the electron shell of an atom that determines the physical and chemical properties of the substance. For example, the atom of helium has two protons is placed under number 2 in the periodic system and is denoted as helium-2. When recording the formulas, often the number indicating the amount of protons is located below the symbol of the element either to the right or to the left. The number of neutrons corresponds to a certain isotope of this or that element. Isotopes are the elements with the equal atomic number, the equal number of protons and electrons, but with different mass numbers. The mass number is the total number of neutrons and protons in a nucleus of an atom. It's denoted by a Latin letter A. When recording the formulas, the mass number is indicated at the top of the element symbol on one side or another. Thus, to identify the number of neutrons in a particular isotope, the number of protons should be subtracted from the total mass number. For example, we know that an atom of helium-4 has four elementary particles, as the mass number of the isotope is four. At the same time, we know that helium has two protons. Having subtracted two, the number of protons, from four, the total mass number, we get two, the number of neutrons in the nucleus of helium-4. It is no coincidence that we used helium-4 as an example, the nucleus of which consists of two protons and two neutrons, as helium-4 nucleus has the highest efficiency in nuclear reactions. It is often used for experiments in this field. It is worth noting that symbol alpha is often used instead of helium-4 in the formulas of the nuclear reactions. In the course of the reaction conducted by Ernest Rutherford, nuclei of nitrogen isotope were bombarded with alpha particles, from hence isotope of oxygen, and one proton appeared. Using the example of this reaction, further we will view the process of detailed calculation of the amount of the phantom Po particles in the nuclei of atoms. Let's calculate the number of phantom pore particles before and after the reaction. The following steps are required to calculate the number of phantom Po particles. Step 1. Calculate the number of neutrons and protons in each nucleus. The number of protons is in the bottom indicator. We will get the number of neutrons by subtracting the number of protons, the lower indicator, from the total mass number, top indicator. Step 2. Calculate the number of phantom Po particles in nucleus of the atom. To multiply the number of protons by the number of phantom Po particles contained in one proton. To 
multiply the number of neutrons by the number of phantom Po particles contained in one neutron. Step 3. Sum up the number of phantom Po particles. To sum up the number of phantom Po particles thus calculated in the protons with the calculated number of phantom Po particles in the neutrons in the nuclei before the reaction. sum up the number of phantom Po particles thus calculated in the protons with calculated number of phantom Po particles in the neutrons in the nuclei after the reaction. Compare the number of phantom Po particles before the reaction with the number of phantom Po particles after reaction. As we can see, even a school-aged child can handle these calculations. Any nuclear reaction can be checked in a similar way. For example, reactions of proton-proton and carbon chains, reactions of thermonuclear fusion, photonuclear reactions, nuclear reactions involving neutrons, and reactions involving alpha particles. For more detailed calculations, please refer to the report. Due to the computation of the amount of phantom Po particles, it is also possible to accurately verify the results of any nuclear reaction and to calculate in a whole the outcome of any nuclear transformations. More information in the Primordial Alatra Physics Report. Primordial Alatra Physics The knowledge of the primordial Alatra physics not only helps to understand the world at the very beginning of its manifestation, the principles of its existence, but above all, to realize the relativity and delusiveness of all the processes that happen temporality and immateriality of existence, the global character and importance of the spiritual world for man. Matter has no internal meaning, but only external manifestation. That is why people never think about the internal structure of things, but take them for granted. All that a person sees in the surrounding world starting with their body 
that like a shell alien to them from their birth and ending with the light of the stars which died a long time ago. That is only a result of temporal interaction of phantom po particles, ghost particles of this world, which appear for a short period of time as a light smoke and disappear immediately. All what oppresses a human being in this world, starting with compulsive thoughts, aggressive emotions, and ending with stereotyped desires of consumer and egoist, all this is a result of a person's choice in favor of septum field, the material smart system which exploits humanity stereotypically. But if man makes a choice, in favor of his spiritual nature, then he obtains eternal life. And there is no religion in that, but only the knowledge of physics and its primordial fundamental principles. Modern people are lacking one thing, holistic worldview, view from the perspective of the spiritual observer, personality who has a huge spiritual potential, the force of Allah, soul, The system, septum field, draws persons' attentions to immediate problems, narrowing their consciousness down to the point of temporal existence. This system divides people, making them suffer and live either in the past or in the future. It focuses the force of their attention during the day on anything except their spiritual component. Because therein lies the real freedom of man, from chains of brainwashing of the material world. The material world is empty in its essence. So whatever success man achieves here, power, possessions, manipulation of the masses or his fellows, as a result, all will turn in senseless emptiness. Efforts spent in vain in favor of septum field of the animal nature. In dreams about the future or complaining about the past, there is no tomorrow. Tomorrow is just day, which succeeds night. And the human body gets old in spite of the inner feelings of a person who has not even started to live yet. Septum field just stimulates and provokes. But it is people who take actions based on their own choices. In order to change the world for the better, we just should start with ourselves, ignoring the system. We should unite with other people on the basis of the primordial knowledge. We should not play up to the system which complicates everything, but have courage to change the situation radically. One should at least start with not multiplying evil and not strengthening the consumer system, but rather promoting spiritual and moral values by any means, day by day. Change conditions and everything will change. The primordial electrophysics gives an understanding of the fundamental principles thanks to which it is possible to take science to a completely new level and to a great extent to ease the life of human civilization, turning it in the direction of moral and spiritual development. Today, the world community has faced a situation when everything is brought to the brink. Most people are afraid to change the system, not because they do not see its harmfulness, but because they do not see another solution. Fair world order, the support for their spiritual actions. But the paradox is that their main support lies not in constant excitation of their own septum field, thoughts about endless suffering, but in the force which can control septum field. And that force is the spiritual nature of a person because every transformation in this world depends on the power of inner potential and its application point. Primordial Alatra Physics.